It's 2 p.m. Detroit, and you know what that means. Detroit media icon Ryan Armani, University of Michigan great Braylon Edwards, and of course, Maz are about to take over on Woodward Sports. Every day, 2 to 4 p.m., it's the best Detroit sports talk on Detroit's best sports network. Woodward Sports. Good afternoon to you. Hey, Rye. It's great. Uh, let's go. Let's do this, man. We've been driving downtown uh, today. It's awesome. There's some streets blocked off, but it's very accessible. Am I right? It is accessible. Driving downtown today, this place has so much going on, you can't help but feel the excitement. It's one thing to talk about it, but it's another thing to be down here and... me and I'm a geek. How many pictures did I make you stop and take? Yeah. Lots it's of like, them. Hey, there's the NFC North Division. <laughs> Those are the logos for the NFC North Division. Stop and take a picture. Oh, you got Aiden Hudsonson up on the bill. It looks like the old Barry Sanders backdrop. Remember that beautiful one that was head to Canton? Remember? I'd never forget that one. I used to get the chills every time I saw that billboard. It's right here at Shake Shack. Matter of fact, it wouldn't be a bad spot to do the uh, draft show, Stick. Would not be a bad spot to do the draft show. Some of the uh, chat uh, believes that uh, I've never seen. They were. That's right. They're back to back uh, uh, Super Bowl champions. The stage looks identical to it, like it always looked with the big looping uh, arch. It looks spectacular. There's so many people down here just sitting around, taking pictures, hanging out, having lunch. And by the way, I just had the Shake Shack, the Double Shack burger with the crinkle fries and the Shake Shack sauce. Oh, yeah, go, oh my God, was that good. The bun, every little ounce of it was great. I mean that 100%. And I will be getting a shake before this day is over. How about you, Ryan? How are you making out? I mean, I don't know. You got to keep going there, man. They can't hear you. I hear you perfectly. Well, keep talking, man. All right. Well, anyway, we are down here. And if last night you were at Ford Field, you know what happened. Yes, there was a uniform leak. But last night was the uniform reveal. And Ford Field was hopping Matter of fact, we got videos to show you when we get a minute. But the uniforms to me look pretty darn good. Matter of fact, I'm going to give it out of a 10, I'm going to give them a 9. I'm going to give them a 9. Especially the uh, Honolulu blue jersey uh, with the uh, silver stripes and the helmet to go with it, the silver pants. It's a throwback to almost the Barry Sanders era in the 90s, which is great. Why are you laughing? I'm just... oh, KB, what do you want me? What do you want from me, man? Anyway, it's been it, last night was spectacular. Yep, you got your black jerseys again, Detroit. Congratulations, you got the black jerseys. But the best part of the black jersey is the helmet that they're gonna wear with that. 
and it is spectacular. And Ryan, you, year, last year or two years ago, we were downtown, and you saw this helmet in one of the shops, mini helmet. And you're like, that's got to be our helmet. And that was the uh, shiny blue one. Yes. Man, let me, let me just... But it didn't have the black line on it. Let me just do a little bit of a timeout, a little bit of a reset. Uh, yeah. uh, my mic was out. I hope people can hear me uh, now. Let me just say this uh, as we start the show. Driving downtown today was incredible. And it's nowhere near even being uh, completed yet. There's workers all over the place. There's construction happening. There's storefronts being uh, clean. There's streets being clean. There's everything uh, that is happening down here. I've been talking about the NFL draft seemingly for months. But to actually be down here is a completely different experience. Driving in, and to be honest with you, there weren't that m many road closures to get into downtown Detroit. Sure, around the footprint it is... It circumvents you around Woodward. Absolutely. It does. It circumvents you around Woodward. There's plenty of areas to be in, though. Um, we are live at Shake Shack in downtown Detroit. And let me tell you, this place, first of all, has incredible burgers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, this is the greatest milkshake I've ever had in my life. And more so than anything... I am looking out the window behind Maz, and you really can't see it right now through Maz's window, but the NFL Draft Theater is directly behind him. I went outside. I, I walked from Shake Shack, where I am, out the doors of the First National Building, just around the corner, and to be right there at the NFL Draft Theater is pretty darn cool. You see Aiden Hutchinson on the, I, and I still do call it as well, the Barry Sanders wall. That big Barry Sanders, Sanders mural is now an Aiden Hutchinson mural where dreams are made, where dreams are realized. And when you look at that stage two, you cannot help but think all of the hard work, all of the people that will go into getting a single player drafted in the NFL, you know, there's going to be, you know, 32 names uh, announced on Thursday night. But each of those names, each of those people has hordes of people behind them that helped them get to that stage. Maybe it was a neighbor that helped take them to practice while their parents were at work. Maybe it was a grandparent. Maybe, obviously, you know, your mom, your dad, your brothers, your sisters, your aunts, your uncles. Uh, your friends, your friends' parents, your coaches, your teachers. You know, so many people help get a young man to that stage on Thursday night. And now to see that stage, I, I just think is is pretty darn cool. I love the draft. It's one of my favorite days of the year. It used to be back in my day on a Tuesday morning, I swear. That's when the NFL draft was. Then they moved it to a Thursday. And before you know it, it was a primetime event. And now it's a three-day primetime event. And it's going to be fantastic here next weekend. Starts on Thursday. We're going to have our party down on Woodward and Adams at the 313 party tent. We'll tell you about that in a minute. But uh, we're going to be here for uh, the first three rounds. We're going to be broadcasting live on Woodward Sports. But the draft to me is it's like a, it's almost like a Super Bowl to mm -hmm. me. I just enjoy it. I'll, I uh, record it. I like to watch it. I remember coming home from a first round of the draft at 1 o'clock in the morning and re-watching the whole first round again. I just, I don't know. There's something about it that, lo that I love. You know, it's always you root for your team. You want to see who your team's going to get. And we don't get a pick in the first five picks like we usually do. We're picking with the big boys now. We're picking at number 29. I do believe that Brad Holmes will, will do something magical that night. I really do. Uh, but that will come. And we'll find out. But it's going to be a, a, a fantastic weekend. The Tigers are home Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So Friday, uh, you have an 8 o'clock uh, draft. 7 o'clock, I think round two and three starts. Tigers play in the afternoon. So there's going to be a lot of people coming on down. And then on Saturday, you got the draft all day long. And it ends about 5 o'clock. Yep, noon to Tigers about start. Five. Tigers start at 640. I mean, it's going to be – Comerica will be packed. There's going to be down – there's going to be people down here – invading our place, and we'll happily let them see it because 
I think we got a phenomenal sports footprint down here in Detroit that I'm very proud of. Not only that, but I'm glad you used that word, Maz, because you used the word proud. I, I can't think of a city or people that are so – Detroiters are a proud people. You know, I mean, um, I, I can't think of a city that is more proud to be part of something than Detroiters are proud to be yep. Detroiters. And, uh, you know, coming downtown today and uh, seeing how great it looks, and, and again, right now it's almost – under construction still, right? And I just, but you can imagine it's what it's going to look. Yeah, I'm a guy that spends a lot of time in downtown Detroit. Me too. As are you in Stick. I yeah. know you are as well. Tell me this place has never looked better. No. I mean, this place Well, I'll has, tell you, Super Bowl Forty, it looked damn good. It was the winter. <laughs> winter Fest was going on. It was beautiful. But, but now it's way more up to date. Yes. It is, it's hip. Super Bowl Forty was a movie set. It was what Detroit could have been, you know, because that was, what, 2006 when Detroit yep. – uh, yeah. I lived downtown at the Jeffersonian. Detroit was not Ooh. great. It, you had one stretch of Woodward with a couple stores, and what they do with all those empty stores, they turned them Outta into there. bars. They, they, like, they just threw up folding tables. They, <laughs> made them, they made them into something. Now the city is something, mm -hmm. and now you get to show it off to the world, which – I go back and forth on, right? Like, I love throwing a party for everybody in the city, but everybody in Detroit. I don't like throwing a party for Chicago Bears fans. Oh. I don't like throwing a party for Packers fans. Like, welcome to the city. Don't enjoy it too much. Well, and here's Bengals what, and Bears. Here's what, and what I like. Yards. Yards. Here's what I like Lions about party. it. Here's what I like about it, though, in, in, in all seriousness. They're going to come here. They're going to have a great time. Yeah. For most people that come here, this is the first time they've ever stepped foot in Detroit. Maybe they've come to Michigan for mm -hmm. at some point before this, but this is probably the first time they've ever stepped foot in Detroit. And they're going to walk away and be like, mm. wow. It's yeah. not as bad That's as Detroit? everybody said it yeah. was. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, they're going to fall in love with it. Yeah. It's to me, it's our – I was driving with you down here, and I said to you, this is our city, mm -hmm. and we call it it's our little city. It mm -hmm. is a little Chicago, a little it's New York. It's the smallest big market it's, in the it world. It is. It's, it really is. It's great. It really is, and I love it just the way it is. I, I do. But to see all the signs and all the signage for the NFL draft, all of the individual teams, we were walking down here and just outside of Shake Shack, um, along this wall where I'm, where I'm at right now, there is, like, uh, how would you call it? Um, there's signage of every NFL team. Yeah. But the first four teams that are, um, In are front shown of the shack. Our NFC North teams, yeah. and, Maz, and Maz, Maz says, <laughs> including the Lions, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but Maz <laughs> says, hey, Rye, can you get a picture of that? <laughs> Make sure you get the entire division. It's my division. It's the <laughs> NFC North. It's the whole division. And it was like a scene right out of Seinfeld where George is telling Jerry – to get a picture of this. We'll put it up for you so you can see how beautiful it is. And we'll put up a picture of the stage as well. But I'm driving down here, and I'm on – I'm driving – I'm in uh, St. Clair Shore, so I take Jefferson down. It turns into Lakeshore Drive. But it's Jefferson. And then it turns into Jefferson again. <laughs> and I'm looking at, at, at Lake St. Clair, which feeds into Lake Huron. And I'm like, man, this is why I live in Michigan. Right. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. And then you're 10 minutes away from down here. Yeah. 10 minutes away. From all the action, what city can you live like that and live comfortably, not getting, not getting slaughtered <laughs> for living expenses, and then come down and, and enjoy all your teams within three blocks of each other? We're the, only, we're the only city in the entire country that you can walk to all four teams professionally within a block. We're the only, and yep. we have the largest theater district outside of New York. But that's fun, fun fact. And there by the go. way, yeah. just, yester this city. just yesterday, uh, Campus Martius, where I'm looking out the window right now, voted the number one public square in the entire country by USA Today. Damn right. For the second year in a row. Wow. And it's just. Uh, Our skating rink bigger than Rockefeller Center. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't so, know about that. It is? Yeah, it is. It is? It is, believe Just it or not. because I'm saying something about New York, man. No, you no, got to no. get all defensive. I've, I've been on that skating rink, and yeah. it, to me, it don't seem as big as it, It's as smaller. Rock. Again, we, right. are we are live Ooh. at Shake Shack <laughs> in downtown Detroit. want to thank Megan and Aaron and Andrew for having us out here today. Uh, the burgers are great. The shakes are incredible, and we invite all of you down here. Shake Shack in Detroit. If you can't make it down today, come on out this weekend, certainly next week. And beyond. We even got Shake Shack water. I know. 
just Look tastes just tastes a little bit better. Better. Um, actually, just one note about the parking as well. It was pretty easy. Yeah, I thought it'd be a lot harder. We got in a garage. We got which in is a about, garage. About yep. a thousand feet from here. Yeah, not, not bad. But you know, let let's see what the prices are next week. It's, they're probably well, going to go up. I a mean, little. come on. I mean, it's supply and demand. It is what it is. Uh, economics is not an emotional decision. It's supply and demand. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, you got three hundred thousand people, f- between three and five hundred thousand people coming down. Probably charge whatever you want. Yeah, I'm afraid right? so. Uh, that's what's going to happen. Those lots are publicly owned, right? Right. Oh, um, God. Driving downtown as well uh, earlier today, Maz, we saw the North Champion uh, banner. We Huge did. Huge banner along I-75 when you exit at... Um, uh, downtown. Yeah, when, uh, uh, right Madison. in front of the DAC, Madison. 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 Um, when you exit at Madison, there's a great big We Are the Champions, the North Champions. Beautiful. Looks like um, a big banner. First time I had seen that flag, a huge banner, uh, and that was great to see. But last night at Ford Field, the Lions unveiled their new uniforms. We did get the leak earlier in the day with just the jerseys. But last night it was the actual reveal, the full picture with the helmets and the uh, pants and everything else. Here is a clip from DetroitLions.com. Okay, we'll get that for you in just a little bit. Pete Spivak off today, even though. (laughs) (laughs) We could blame him, though. Can we blame Pete still? I saw a couple of people. Um, Here are are some of the pictures. Do we have the video of that, though? We got all the pictures. Okay, we got all the pictures, but do we have the video? No. Okay, we do not have the video. Sorry. (laughs) Go to uh, DetroitLions.com if you want to see the video. Oh, all good, all good, all good. So, all right, so very good. Uh, the white block lettering, Maz, you talked about going back to yep. that 90s version of these That's uniforms. What it is. That's what it is. I love it. I love those blue jerseys. They're spectacular. The silver pants, a beautiful helmet. Remember I complained about William Clay Ford not being on a jersey? Mm-hmm. That's okay. He's on the back of the helmet. We'll show you the helmets in a little bit. The one combo I don't like are the white jerseys. With the blue pants. And we're seeing them right now. Yeah. What don't you like about them? You don't like I, these? No, I don't like the white with the blue pants. To me, it, it just it don't look right. I like the all white or a white with the silver pants. I don't like those blue pants unless they're being worn with the blue top or the black top, which might look really good with those blue pants. Well, that is one of the combinations as well. I like the all black, I like the all white, and I like the blue and the silver. Yep. How about the helmets? You guys don't like the black and the blue? Yeah, I, I like don't the black like and the, the blue. I don't like the black. And the, really? I mean, I just like the I all do. black. Because when I first saw the black jersey, I was like, oh, okay, that's nice. So we've already done the black jersey. Mm-hmm. But then when they put it with that blue helmet and those blue oh, pants, look great. I'm, like, I'm like, this is yes. amazing. That helmet to me, well, I'm going to get it. I, I I got last year's helmet with the uh, Mr. Ford's favorite logo on it, the the stretch line on the, uh, like, like the Mustang uh, right. emblem. Yeah, how but do you I feel did. about them taking off William Clay Ford from the sleeve? I know, but he's on the helmet. I know, but how do you feel about him taking him off the sleeve? I didn't like it at first, but now that I see the jerseys, it's good. It's on, he's on the helmet. I'm good like that. But um, I love this helmet. I did not like last year's helmet. Uh, I did you know, not like that helmet. But when you actually saw it on the field in games, it did. it almost looked better in game action than it did just yeah. a, as a one-off. Yeah. That blue helmet is exactly the one that we saw at this uh, that sports shop yep. coming out of Ford Field. I forgot the name of it. Right next to uh, the uh, Chelly's, which is now, the, uh, what is it? Tin, tin, roof. Tin, roof. tin Roof. They've got the white helmet, the blue helmet, yeah. the black helmet. It's almost like yes. that is exactly what this helmet I was. I love the Black Lion logo on that blue too. helmet. It looks fantastic. And... I asked for it, and I got it. I got the plain silver helmet that they used to wear on Thanksgiving Day, and I guarantee that will be the Thanksgiving uniform. No doubt. Um, Michael says on the WoodwardSports.com chat, how could the Lions not allow Nike Nike to put stripes on the blue and white pants is a complete joke. That That was done on purpose so that those blue and white pants could be interchangeable. There you go. That's why, because they want those blue pants to be able to be worn with the black jerseys as well, not just the blue home jerseys or or the white jerseys. Yeah, they definitely can move all of that around. Absolutely. Which I really like. But that's exactly why you don't put the stripes on the pants. Rod Wood said that this was going to be 
a jersey and uniform we could be proud of, and I am. And how about Dan Campbell was the reason that the black jerseys were brought back. He asked Rod Wood years ago, hey, I want those black jerseys back, the one I used to wear. And what did Rod tell him? Do you remember what Rod told yep, him? Yep, Rod, Rod told him, if you win the division, you'll get the black jerseys. And Braylon Edwards, welcome in, my friend. Uh, we were just talking about, hey, Bray. You, you know, these jerseys yesterday. I thought we were in uh, Birmingham. <laughs> <laughs> you were. The funny thing is, I've been in Birmingham since 1 o'clock. <laughs> I went to Lululemon. I went to my car. ate a sandwich. ate a breakfast sandwich that my girl made. And, uh, all right, cool. La, 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 la. Well, let me tell you. It's okay. I found out I was in the wrong location. No, no you got you're down fine, here dude. quick, man. You got down you, here quick. Straight down what we're That proves my point how quick That's exactly what we were talking about. Just driving in today, it's not as bad as no, people, you know, kind of make it out to be. Now, is that only because today is Friday and you got a whole other week Even before so. it really heats up? It was smooth. I mean, shoot, you coming down from Birmingham, I took Wolver straight to 696, 696.75, and it was it really didn't even get bottlenecked when I got downtown to 94. Good to see fun. you, man. I missed you. I, I had a good night last night, man. I, I saw. About you guys. It was a lot I of saw. fun. I saw. Rob Porsche is one of my favorite Detroit Lions of all time, one of my favorite mentors. At Number that. 91. 100%. He is South Carolina State, and I uh, haven't seen him in a while, and he was there. He was on the panel. It was he, Rob Sims. And, uh, what was it for, tell the people? Uh, yeah, so yesterday we were at the uh, the DAC hanging out, and what it was basically, it was the DAC members. You should just move down here for the next week. I'll be at the Western Book Cadillac. <laughs> <start to> <laughs> shout out to the Jets. I'll be at the Western Book Cadillac, so I will be down here, uh, which is literally right around the corner. But the DAC just had an event kind of trying to bridge the DAC members and networking with former players. Guys, all of them played for the Lions except mm. me, you know, uh, Rob, Joyke, and uh, – Rob Porsche, it was Rob Sims, Rob Porsche, myself, the New York Jets. But it was fun. We got up there. He asked us questions about the your girl was there, the Hammer. Oh no, kidding, Jennifer Hammond. I was about to say which one. She, uh, <laughs> she, <laughs> she never misses <laughs> a good time, does she, she? She moderated the panel, man. She did a, a great job. One good. thing about Jen is she's so good at it, as you guys know is she knows what the people want to hear. So she right. asks the questions that people want to answer. She says the things that people want to say. But when she was doing this panel, you know, she just let us kind of go, and she asked. Rob Perche, some great questions. She has Rob Sims, some great questions. We friend of the show. You know, he started that primitive space with yes, Calvin. Sir. And they're actually, mm -hmm. with the Detroit Lions this year, it'll be the first time uh, I can't have a sponsorship, I think, in the NFL. So that's you're great. 100%. And then Joyk, you know, <laughs> another former friend oh of the show. Oh, my God. How's Joyk? Uh, he's doing good, man. Good. He, he's, he's, OG. He, he's back in shape. He's, he's down weight. He cut his hair. Nice. He cut his hair, so no more dreads for Joy, man. I'll never forget one night we had him on the air, yeah. and we gave him, what was that, one chip challenge? Remember the one chip challenge? You remember that? It was Oh, so, the hot chip, yeah. Yep, and we challenged him, and he's like, I'll do it. So we give it to him, and he's just sitting there, and he's chewing it. He's a big cook, too, so yep. that's probably why he felt bold. He's sitting there. I think we had milk for him, too. And we were feeding him milk. He was drinking it. He was cool. All of a sudden, you just see beads of sweat. Just start to take over his whole body, and then he starts breathing heavy. And you know, and he took it. He took it as as well as he could, but I don't think he felt very good after that. Stick. How long did it take him to like collapse? He was uh, he was out, man. But you know, I'll tell you. Fun. You know what it helped him? And I just killed this um, shake. Okay. Yeah. How was it, shake? I'm gonna get, get me a one, dude. Let me it? like. I'm not. I I swear to God, I'm not just saying this because I'm here. This is the greatest shake I've ever had in my life. Mm. Oh wow! Is it, so is 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 it better than pot belly? This is the greatest shake I've ever had in my life. Better than five it, guys. It's yeah. better. It's better than any shake. Are I've you ever surprised? Had in my life. Well, yes and no. I mean, that chicken sandwich was amazing. Like I, the, 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 I can't stop thinking about the double that I just had. Yeah, uh, double? a double shake, shake, shake burger. Was it I good? mean, oh. Fantastic. Hold on, not, I know I was late, but did I miss that part where I get fed? <laughs> <laughs> you I can still eat, but you ain't already. Are you hungry? Oh I gosh. had a breakfast sandwich, but that right, was a good one. Oh you my gosh, we got you, Ray. We got you. We got you. I've been doing the Shake Shack read now for six <laughs> weeks. <laughs> what do you want? Can I get the chicken? What do you I want, want the chicken shack, shake shack sandwich. Done. Done. I know if, you, if you use promo code Woodward, you can uh, get it. <laughs> I want a chocolate shake as well. <laughs> oh, Megan's back. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Megan. <laughs> Thank you, Megan. I appreciate oh, that's it. That's fantastic. Uh, yeah. and, oh, then Crinkle Fries. Here. <laughs> Is that Emily or Megan? You got to eat. You gotta eat. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, and I get a shake, too. 
Oh, he's got a Michigan hat on. I know he knows. Oh, that's that, so. Aaron over there. He said, what kind of shake you up, right? Uh, strawberry. Oh, right. <laughs> strawberry. I'm black man. Chocolate. <laughs> I'm a black man. I'm chocolate, but I want a strawberry shake. Hey, Braylon, let me, let me just in terms of where we are. At Jersey Shake-Shake, Reveal. It, it, well, no. Quick, no. It, just in terms of where we are in downtown Detroit, right outside those windows, yeah. the theater. The NFL Draft Theater. And during a break, I invite you to just kind of peek your head, walk out the first national building, okay. peek your head around the side, just look at that Draft Theater because that has to bring, and I know it's a different location, but that has to bring so many new, so many old memories uh, for you just getting your name called and experiencing what these players will experience on Thursday night. You know, every every around this time every year, Maz, stick. Good to see you too, stick. Uh, money, Mike. Around this time every year, I don't know what it is, man. Like, my body kind of knows it's April. It's around that time because, you know, those dopamines were released when I was on stage. When Paul Tagliabue said, and with the third pick in the 2005 NFL draft, like, I still get, you know, butterflies thinking about it. So around this time every year, it's an exciting time for me. I get a chance to see the, the young crop coming out of college, man, and, you know, the hopes and dreams of, you know, Marvin Harrison Jr. wanting to be his father or wanting to be better than his father or Kayla Williams wanting to prove the doubters wrong. J.J. McCarthy wanting to show that, you know, he was more that their journeys are just starting. And that's kind of where I remember myself around this time is, you know, I want to prove that Michigan wasn't just a fluke. I would be able to do this in the NFL. So whenever I see that draft logo and you start driving in down, down uh, on 75, you start seeing the signs. Last night I was on 96 driving into the DAC and you see the signs and the logos. You get excited, man. Mm. This is an exciting time. You're talking about we're 41 and 44. Yeah. They're kids. You know what's funny, too, yeah, is like w- when you mentioned like Paul Tagliabue oh, was the commissioner for you. Like I, I think of, you know, in Roger Goodell's he been was, the commissioner yeah, for, for a there. number of years now, right? So it's not a big My deal. My commissioner is Alvin Pete Rosell. Right. Rosell. And, and I guess – I guess mine, mine would be Paul Tagliabue. <laughs> like, that's the guy, you know, in the NBA, it would be David Stern. You know, when you 100%. get drafted in the NBA and you're kind of on the cusp of a, of a commissioner turnover, like, I would have to imagine if you were the first year of Goodell, so, it wouldn't have popped the way it popped when you walk out to meet Paul Tagliabue. So, funny story is, I'm so happy that Paul Tagliabue, who actually played basketball at Georgetown, man, he, he can hoop back in the day. But I'm so glad that it was Paul Tagliabue. I grew up watching the draft. Like you said, you grew up watching Pete Rosell. I mean, uh, Pete Rosell, uh, Maz, that's a little before me and Ryan. But, Ryan, we grew up watching on Saturday. Mm. You watch Paul Tagliabue, this tall guy with these glasses. He was so sharp. He was so smooth. I was glad that I was with P- Paul Tagliabue mm. at the end. Because Roger Goodell, even though I, I like Roger to a certain extent now in certain things, but he remember he was awkward those mm. first three, four years. Like yep. He was he didn't want to hug anybody. The handshake was kind of a little weird. He just seemed, like, awkward in that moment. Now he's much better. He's doing handshakes and daps and hugging guys. But I would have that would have sucked being yep. those first three years just because of how awkward it was. Like, that moment is supposed to be, you know, what it is now for these players, what it was when I went with Paul Tagle. But I mean, Rodgers got in there now, but he was awkward in the beginning. You know, and then, uh, you know, if you're an NBA player, you'd probably, at, at, at a certain point in time, would want David Stern to be on that yeah, stage yeah. and not uh, – and not Adam Silver. But nonetheless, hey, guys, who is going to be picked uh, when Thursday comes? We're going to run down um, – we're going to run down Dave Burkett's mock draft. And for the third consecutive mock draft, he has this position pegged to the Lions at 29. We'll let you know what that is coming up. But first, a message from Planet Fitness. Planet Fitness, the home of the No Judgment Zone. Everybody wants to work out, but you want to work out at your own pace. You know where you do it? You do it at Planet Fitness. Only they charge $10 a month. Only $10. Stood on business. Yes, Ryan and mine, only $10. And it is home of the squeaky clean gym as well. No judgment, squeaky clean, and only $10. Planet Fitness, your fitness is essential. Counting down the days until Detroit shows the world how the draft should be done. Woodward Sports, your official Detroit draft partner. Listen for great insight into the draft, places to go, and what's happening in the city. The Detroit Lions select. See you downtown for the draft. At work and at home, we're there with smarter security solutions. Featuring complete automation with customized alerts and more. For over 90 years, we've been the company that's been counted on to protect what matters most, all with personalized service and care. Right now, for a limited time, receive a free video device plus free installation with a new home system. Guardian Alarm. We protect Michigan. 
buying your first Feldman Chevrolet is much more than buying the car that will get you from point A to point B. It's a place for first memories, some big, some small. As she grows, you're not just buying her a Chevy, you're buying into a Feldman family. With more than 700,000 vehicles sold, from generation to generation, Feldman just keeps rolling. The most talked about Detroit media by other Detroit media. And we love it. It's the Woodridge Sports Network. Hey, guys, you know where we are. We are downtown Detroit at Shake Shack. And let me tell you about a great party that's going to happen next Thursday and Friday with Woodward Sports, April 25th and 26th. Join the entire Woodward Sports family. We're going to broadcast the first three rounds of the NFL Draft. We're going to be downtown corner of Woodward and Adams at the 313 Draft Party presented by Figer Law. All we do is win. 21 and over, free to everyone. Party starts at 2 p.m. Thursday. Live draft coverage begins at 8. We hope to see you downtown at the 313 Draft Party. Special thanks to Sorokis and Glorious. While the world watches Detroit, we're going to show you how the world how Detroit parties. We're going to show them right now at the 313 Draft Party. Join us next Thursday and Friday. Not so much with player, but position. And again, we are live from Shake Shack in downtown Detroit, just outside of the NFL Draft Theater, off in the distance. That's a funny question. Yeah. Hey, man, how was Joe Lewis as a boxer? Did you see him in person? I didn't see him in person, but I loved him. Yeah, okay. Loved him. Why do you ask? Uh, no, just a, it's a beautiful photo of him right now, I know. the Brown Bomber, and obviously the I used to love his the statue the of him. I'm sorry to cut you off. At Kobo. No, good. I used to love that statue at it's Kobo. It's a great statue, yeah. Love the Joe Lewis fist downtown. It's, yeah. uh, he's, a, he's an icon. Yeah, he is. Icon. All right. What about Rocky Marciano? Rocky's good. But he's a Boston <laughs> guy. He so, loved Joe Lewis. I prefer Joe Lewis. <laughs> Hey, Sorry. I, I start with Muhammad Ali. Lewis is 175 years old. <laughs> hey, it's a I lie. start with Cassius Clay to Muhammad Ali. That's for, my yeah. life. For okay. the for the young for the young kids out there, it's a coming line to from coming to America, right? <laughs> and talking what about, about Oscar? <laughs> I, I, I was really cracking a joke on Mass. I know there's no way Mass on Joe Lewis. Is too old. <laughs> Joe Lewis boxing in the you know about Joe Lewis? <laughs> um, Guys, let's talk a little draft here. Big as though we are in downtown Detroit, you could see the NFL Draft Theater off in the distance. Oh, I and, love that and, and not oh, so man. much the player, but the position. And I feel like I was vindicated last year a lot, too, because I kept talking about running back at six, running back at six, running back at six. It was the wrong running back, but nonetheless, right they, uh, it, it was the right position. I feel like that a little bit with Burkett, too. Burkett has done three mock drafts. Dave Burkett of the Detroit Free Press. Three consecutive mock drafts. Each and every time. He has the Detroit Lions selecting an offensive lineman. Yeah. Huh. Uh, in this particular mock draft, he has offensive lineman Zach Frazier from West Virginia. Down goes Frazier. Here's the write-up uh, that he has. Um, for the third straight time, I have an offensive lineman mocked to the Lions because I like the players and the fit. Had Darius Robinson and Cooper DeGene still been on the board, they'd make sense here as well. There are a couple of cornerbacks that I'd strongly consider. Um, but ultimately, Brad Holmes is billed through the trenches, and uh, that's what the Lions do here. I do believe the Lions could, eat in, and we talked about it, trade up yeah. or trade back if they identify an offensive lineman that they that they uh, want. Yeah, I believe it's easier to get a defensive back through trade, through free agency, through uh, cap casualty during training camp than it is to get an offensive lineman that could be, you know, an eight-year starter on your team. I think you've ultimately have to do that through the draft. Uh, yeah, I agree with you 100%. You know, um, this is a heavy-loaded offensive line draft, which means you're going to have first-round talent towards the back of the draft. You're going to have some really good offensive linemen. You heard, uh, you heard tw Tim Twentyman, who came over uh, yesterday. Oh, and, well, hold on, Braylon. Special okay. delivery <laughs> for you. Appreciate that. Uh, Andrew, thank you so much. Oh, this is for you, Braylon. Oh, Look at that. You. Oh, my gosh, the chicken sandwich. I was on a diet until today. Oh, my gosh. I was got two fries, a strawberry wow. shake. Sheesh. My goodness. Appreciate we, you guys. Thank you so much. I, I, I forgot what like. I was going to say. <laughs> but, you know, uh, what I got. We, we had Tim Twentyman on <laughs> yesterday. Chocolate. 
We had Tim Twentyman on yesterday, and he was talking about the DBs. He said once you get past maybe four DBs, it's a significant drop off. Mm -hmm. That's not the case with the offensive line, mm -hmm. so it makes sense that uh, you would be able to draft one and be feel really good about that pick that late. The other thing is this. Man, you surprised me good. Oh, good. If you look at the offensive line for the Detroit Lions, look, you got Frank Rag now. He's injured a lot lately. He's got the toe. He's got the ankle. He's got the knee. You know he's not going to be around forever. You look at Kevin Zeitler, pro bowler. Love him coming over from Baltimore Ravens. Great in the pass protecting him. Pretty good in the run blocking as well. He's in year 13, mm -hmm. Maz. Yep. He's in year 13. And then Taylor Decker. He just had another procedure yep. that we're just finding about Ankle now. Ankle and foot. Ankle and foot. So when you look at it from that point, you got guys that are injured. You got guys that are older. You got to protect yourself. With the Detroit Lions do best, Ryan and Monty, what have you been telling me for the last two years? Their strength is the offensive line. It, it, it's their not only their strength, it's their entire identity. Yeah. Everything that they have done in the last 18 months is because of the success of that offensive line. And the health of that offensive line. And Brad Holmes talked yesterday as well. And I think this is an important point, Maz. Brad Holmes did not talk about a Super Bowl window. He did not want to refer to a window for the Super Bowl. What he is trying to do is build an operation that can win every year. Yep. Just sustained success. Like the Ravens. Player goes out, player Jeez. comes in. Player goes out, player comes in. You don't miss a beat. And I think that is – when you make draft picks like this, when you draft an offensive lineman in round one, it's not sexy. It probably yeah. will not get the big pop from the, uh, the people in the audience, in the crowd on Thursday night, but it's how you win championships. And not, so I want you to react to that. But also my statement of I think it's – easier to get a defensive back or a wide receiver by any other means but the draft than it is to go get an offensive lineman. I do think your offensive lineman must come through for the most part. Yeah. Guys are going to be with you for six, seven, eight, nine, ten years through the draft. Well, let me ask you about uh, the team picking behind the Lions are the Baltimore Ravens. Yep. Who does Dave have the Ravens taken? An offensive lineman. He does. Uh, Amarius Mims, the offensive tackle okay. from Georgia. Now, that means is McKinstry gone already? Is uh, Kool-Aid McKinstry already taken at this um, point? He already on. said he already said that Cooper DeGene was taken. Cooper McKinstry is uh, uh, Kool-Aid Kool McKinstry is not taken in the oh, first wow. round. Oh, wow. So, they're going to pass up on Kool-Aid? I doubt they do that. Well, that's they, – They're <laughs> taking a cornerback. I have seen Kool-Aid McKinstry anywhere from 25 to, to 40. 40. Yep. Okay. You know what I mean? So that then, then it really just comes down to, Braylon, the evaluation of the player yeah. by, by the individual organization. Yeah, 100%. And then when it comes down to the evaluation, then that's why you got to trust Brad Holmes. His evaluating skills have been off the charts for the past three years. But going back to that quote about, um, about the offense line, it's not sexy. You know, drafting mm -hmm. a big guy, he's not scoring touchdowns, he's not getting interceptions, he's not getting sacks, he's not throwing touchdowns. But what happens is, you know when it gets sexy? is when you look at how good the offensive line was for the Detroit Lions last year. When you look at how good they were the year before that. When you watch Panay Sewell dominate ends. When you watch Taylor Decker when he played. When you watch Frank Ragnow when he's healthy, dominate. That's where it comes into play. So, yeah, it sucks in the moment because you want to get a touchdown or you want to get you know, that excitement that has now become the NFL. You know what the excitement stems from is those big uglies blocking up front. So, I'm all with it. <laughs> Who's going to hit it? I can't do a move here without Stick hitting me on a camera. <laughs> I take a sip of my thing. He's got it locked right on me. Oh, my God. Right it's a big hit back. I mean, this is, hey, hey, here you go. That is phenomenal. Pegged Delicious. you. Delicious. Pegged you. This son of a oh. – honestly. But, again, uh, all he cares about is getting me to, to do something wrong. Hey, Maz, <laughs> yeah. but, but just back to who the Ravens are taking, yeah. right? Um, they're taking an offensive lineman. One of the reasons why they're probably taking an offensive lineman is because Zeitler yeah. uh, left. So they're thin there. Yeah. But the thing is, Lamar Jackson is uh, his own guy. He don't, he don't even really need an offensive line that good because he's going to be on the move. Well, Derrick Henry is going to help with that, too. Exactly. Exactly. I saw a stat that was crazy. It said in the last, I want to say, five years, Derrick Henry, obviously most yards in the NFL, over a little over 8,000. Also, in that, sta in that time span, mm. Lamar Jackson is fourth with over 6,000 yards rushing. They're going to be fun to watch, man. And they're going to be fun to watch. But the only thing is, Derrick Henry, he's come up lame like two, three of the last four seasons. So, 
is he done is going to be the big question. You know, it, it's it's so hard to peg what you're going to do because I think mo- sandwich. I think most of us believe they're not picking at 29. I, I is, think they're is going that, up. Is that, can, do we agree on that? I mean, whether you believe they're going to trade up or trade back. I agree. I, I, I think if you had three likely – or three scenarios, not likely. If you had three scenarios, trade up, stand pat, trade back, I think we would all rank stand pat third. I rank it second. You rank it second. Yes. I, rank, I do not think they're trading out of the first round. If anything, they're going up or they're staying at 29. Okay. And because their player has fell, fell to them mm. at 29. But if he sniffs guy that's going up a little bit higher, mm. I'm telling you, he's going up to get him. Ask me to rank him. I'm going stay as number one. Okay. Okay. Draft tra- trading back would be two for me, and then trading one. Going back, the only thing is the question: How much could you get for the pick? That would be my question there. But I think staying is number one. Going back is two, and then moving up would be three. You get that second, second round pick back. 100%. Because remember, they traded. They traded uh, their second round pick. Their, Last, or earlier. They traded, they traded their own to get second round Davenport. pick. They're ke- yes, yeah. they're keeping Minnesota's uh, second round pick, which is higher. Because coming into this draft, Detroit did have two second round picks. Yeah. Right? Yep, they have four in the top 92. Yeah. No, it's three. Right, yep. exactly. So, um, Was that in the Carlton Davis trade? That was in the Carlton Davis trade. That's okay. exactly right. Yeah. Um, and they kept their higher third-round pick. Okay. So, I so mean, with, he, with, with that deal, they gave, they gave up a pick for a cornerback. Yeah. Right? They got a cornerback. That's why I'm thinking they need another guy to pair with him. Yeah, Kirby, okay. You heard about Kirby Joseph. Kirby Joseph underwent hip surgery. Supposedly, he's going to be ready for the mm-hmm. regular season. So, yep. I hope so, but he was there. Supposed to be ready for training camp. Training, yeah, training camp. Hip, yeah. I don't know what, what, what's up with the hip. But that's that's nothing to play around with. No, uh, he looked pretty good last night dancing in though. his uniform. Yeah, yeah his, he looked like he could unis. move last night a lot. Um, it, sorry, it's also too. It's a different. It's a difference in words when you say surgery versus procedure. He had a hip procedure. When you say surgery, we instantly think of the worst. You think of Bo Jackson back in '88 on the sideline. More of a procedure versus a surgery. You say surgery, you think the worst. He had a procedure. He'll be fine. All right. Yeah, he'll be fine. Uh, guys, at the top of this draft, Burkett has, you know, four quarterbacks, one, two, three, and four. Caleb Williams, uh, Jaden Daniels going two to Washington. Drake May, three to the New England Patriots. And then he's got Minnesota trading up to four mm. to get him. And, and That means the Cardinals traded. And absolutely, the Cardinals traded back. And I've seen that in a couple of different places now. Peter Schrager also uh, has his first four picks are quarterbacks. He had the Giants trading up to four yep. uh, to get J.J. McCarthy. Um, so it is – I don't know if it's l- – yeah, it is likely that four quarterbacks are going to go one, two, three, and four for the first time ever in the modern draft. I don't think that will happen. Yeah, I, don't I don't think the Cardinals trade that pick. If anyone's trading, it's going to be Jim Harbaugh at number five. He'll go down, Giants move up a spot, or – Maybe this thing just falls to the right. Giants. Maybe no one trades. Cardinals take Marvin Harrison. Chargers take Joe Alt. And the Giants at six get their guy in J.J. McCarthy. I agree with you, Maz. I, I believe it's one of those things we've been hearing so much about it, whether people are trying to get uh, people to come up to get that pick at four, get that pick at five, the Cardinals, the Chargers. I think once it boils down to it, man, like now all of a sudden, you know, Drake May is in limbo. Is Drake May this? He's that. You got people saying he's a guy. Your, your guy, Merrill Hodge, yep. he's a guy that gets coaches fired. He's a guy that messes up regimes. This has come out about him. I see two quarterbacks, and then I see people waiting. I don't even see anybody coming up to get J.J. McCarthy. I think a lot of that J.J. McCarthy stuff, I think people can stay put and get J.J., whether it's the, uh, the New York Giants at six or whether it's even the Minnesota Vikings at eleven. I don't see anybody coming up. I think we're starting, the water is starting to level off. I think you see two quarterbacks taken back to back and not a third and a fourth. So, for just for the, for the sake of the argument uh, on the Peter Schrager mock draft, Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Drake May, you got the Giants trading up with Arizona four and six. Um, and then he's got Marvin Harrison going five to. Jim Harbaugh wow. and the L.A. Chargers. Right. Then he's got Arizona selecting a wide receiver. Arizona goes from 45 to 
Jim Harbaugh wow. and the L.A. Chargers. Right. Then he's got Arizona selecting a wide receiver. Arizona goes from four to six in this case. Romo Dunze over Malik Neighbors. So you have in this in this Peter Schrager draft, you have four quarterbacks going one, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven, wide, wide receiver, receiver, wide receiver, wide receiver. So – yeah, that's interesting. And if it happened like that, that'd be the first time probably ever in NFL history. I think the wild card, Ryan, is the Cardinals. I think the wild card is the Cardinals and what they're thinking, in, in my estimation. Marvin Harrison Jr. is is a stud. Like We know the pedigree he comes from. He's 6'3". He's physical wide receiver. He also can run the routes. He's great at the 50-50 ball. He's a slam dunk. Like he's a, he, Literally, it's two slam dunks in this draft. And a lot of people don't even know if Caleb Williams is a slam dunk. It's Caleb Williams. It's Marvin Jones. I mean, Marvin Harrison Jr., you get that guy. Joe you've, Alt, too. You've already – Joe Alt, too. i give you that third. What about Brock Bowers? I think he's a slam dunk, but the injury. Yeah. The only thing is tight end getting injured, that, that's it's not a good sign. But I think he is, too, but asterisk. But uh, just going back to uh, Marvin, Har- Marvin Harrison Jr., man, you pair him up with Kyler Murray. You've already paid Kyler Murray $175 million guaranteed. He's not going anywhere. Nobody's going to pick up that deal for him right now. You believe in him. You got a new coach last year. And, look, when guys were healthy, you played well. The Cardinals – Remember early on in the season, the Cardinals beat the Cowboys. Yeah. They out physical them. So when they were healthy, they actually didn't play bad for this coach. So I think you take the wide receiver. You have Kyler Murray. See what that guy can give you for one more year. And then maybe deal him and do something next year. But I don't think the Cardinals move out of that pick. Maz, first seven play- – does that give you an indication of what this league has become? Oh, God, yeah. It's yes. all offense, baby. It's all offense. Four quarterbacks in three wide receivers in the first seven picks of this draft just completely indicates where this NFL is going. What have you always said about the Lions back in the day? Make what you do good, make it better. Make what you do great, make it even greater. That's yep. why last year I was so high on the running back situation. Yeah. And I, you know, I did say B. John Robinson. They went with Jameer Gibbs. Fine. I'm not into the player evaluation, but I'll tell you, I got the position right when a lot of people thought I was nuts. Here's a funny thing. Speaking of running backs, Maz and Ryan, you know, you bring up a good point. It's where the league is now. You look at four quarterbacks, three wide receivers. Ryan, I just did who went in the top ten mm-hmm. when I got when I came out. Listen to how the league has changed. Number two was a running back, Ronnie Brown. Number four was a running back, Cedric Benson. Number five was a running back, right. Cadillac Williams. There were three running backs. Inside the top five mm-hmm. back then. So you're absolutely right about what the league has become. Nine in, in the Peter Schrager mock draft. And a lot of people look at the Peter Schrager mock draft, and I, I didn't realize, you know, the cachet that Peter Schrager has in NFL circles. Yeah. This guy is as dialed in and as beloved as any analyst out there. He does uh, a good job. He's um, great on the – He's it, very wake, humble. I, I, I like him. But I is think, it wake up, it wake up Football? Yeah. yeah. He's good, really morning, good morning Football. Good, good morning, morning football. football. He's great on that show. Um, and – and a lot of people are looking at this mock draft is one that is probably a little bit closer to what could happen because of how dialed in this guy is. Now, again, just where the league is going, nine of the first ten players are offensive players. Yeah. When's the last time you had one defensive player? Who's the only defensive player? Dallas Turner, the edge from Alabama. Yeah? Who gets him? The Atlanta Atlanta Falcons. Falcons. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, um, Latu, Latu is uh, number 11. That's Bray's guy. Bray likes yep. him. I like him a lot. Bray likes him. Wow. And then Quinn and Mitchell. So three players of the top 16 are defensive players. Who do you have the Jets Here. getting? So, again, uh, 13 of the first 16 players. Yeah. Offense. Here's a question. What The draft that had Zach Wilson. Brock Bowers. Zach Wilson, Trey Lance, all those guys. Man, was that 2020 or 2021? Uh, all the, uh, Justin Fields, et cetera. So that would have been 20. 20. That would have been 2020, right? Oh, yep. yeah, there was a COVID draft, yep. correct? There were five quarter, There were five quarterbacks taken in the top, what, four in the top ten, six in the top uh, well, Everyone's looking for a quarterback. So I'm saying, so yeah. to your point, the last time it had to be that one because there were two offensive linemen and wide receiver taken as well, so maybe that one. Like, that's where the league is. Right. That's where the league is. Y- your boy Brock Bowers going to the Jets, yeah. Maz. Is, is I love said. that. Yeah. I love that. I mean – if Aaron Rodgers stays healthy, we've been saying it. The Jets are the dark horse of the AFC. I saw something that said they had, like, the second easiest schedule. And, again, it's yeah. all year to year. You have yeah. no idea what's, you know. It finished last. Right. What's what. 
Yeah, you look at the Lions schedule. From one year to the next. Yeah, you look at the Lions schedule last year, the beginning of the year, it looked like, you know, pretty much a, a semi-tough schedule. And you got into it, and some of those teams necessarily didn't show up, so the schedule changed. So, yeah, you're right about that. Uh, Kool-Aid McKinstry going to the Lions at 29. I was wondering when you were going to get to the Lions. Now, who picks behind them? It's the Ravens. Who do they take? I'm always interested in what the Ravens get. Who we don't it take, works. the Ravens get. They do an amazing them, job in scouting, scouting personnel. Yes. They do a good coaching, development. I'm telling you, they yeah. know how to draft. I agree. So, they have, first of all, 28. Uh, Buffalo takes LSU wide receiver Brian, Brian Thomas. Okay. 30, the Lions take Kool-Aid McKinstry. That's 29. 30. Baltimore takes defensive back Nate Wiggins. Oh. And then Zach Frazier, the guy pegged, yeah. uh, goes 31 to the San Francisco 49ers. And Donnie Mitchell, wide receiver from Texas, closes it out, goes to Kansas City at pick 32. I think you could lock up a wide receiver at yeah. 32. Yeah. I, I think for I think sure. you could do that at 28 as well. 28. Buffalo. Buffalo. They yeah. just got rid of Stephon Diggs. Yeah. And, oh, they got rid of both their wide receivers. They traded Stephon Diggs. And, and they Gabe. Let Gabe go. Gabe, Gabe was a one-touchdown show. Got paid and was disappeared. That, was that overtime game? It was five, he had five yeah. touchdowns that game. That was amazing. Uh, that was like uh, your boy uh, Matt Flynn in oh, Seattle. Man. You know, he had six touchdowns against the Lions. That's us. Last passing, game right? of the year. <laughs> he didn't even get a ch- It's That story is so funny. Like, whenever I tell that story, like, it never gets old, even to me telling it. They pay Matt Flynn, you know, what was it, $60 million, or he was getting $15 million or $17 million a year. I get to Seattle in training camp, and I legitimately watch Pete. Pete does not like older players. I've always told you that he likes Pete Carroll. Pete Carroll. Pete likes younger, younger players. He likes younger players. He comes from the college life, so he appreciates the younger energy. Oh, yeah, he does. And he understands how to make that money fast. as Fast. A race, 100%. He didn't even give Matt Flynn a chance, Maz. I'm talking about I didn't see Matt Flynn take many first-team reps. Zach, I mean, not Zach, uh, Russell was getting those first-team reps out the gate. He started the first game in the preseason. He started the second game in the preseason. Who did he throw his first touchdown to? Uh, that would be a one brother Edwards. That's right. First NFL touchdown, <laughs> Russell. It was preseason, though, but it, it that, still yeah, counts. This, this is true. I appreciate that. Now, what do you that. think of Russ when you, when you saw him as a yeah. rookie? What did you say to yourself? Hey, is Pete Carroll out of his mind, or, man, this kid's got it? I, I didn't think he was out of his mind because he's a second-round quarterback. He won at Wisconsin, so you know me. I'm big on being able to win in college. He won the Big Ten Championship, and he was a great baseball player. I didn't see that he was going to be a Hall of Fame quarterback. I'm not lying about that. Like, what I saw is a guy that threw a good deep ball. He was mobile in the pocket. He was a leader. He approached the game very seriously. But I didn't see anything overly special in terms of his skill set. But what I did see is a guy that worked hard, and I think that's been his trademark. Even you see him in the offseason, he's always working on, always doing something. So I didn't see Hall of Fame, man, but I saw a guy that was going to work hard and be a good leader, if you will. Pretty good stuff, man. I'll tell you, uh, lots of exciting times, and Russ still going, man. Still going. Still going strong. Matt Flynn, not about so strong, much. But he's going. Matt Flynn, not so much. Last night I was bowling, just to let you know. Oh, yeah. God, yeah. Did, wait did a you, minute. Yeah. How are we 54 minutes into the show and I just know. talking about Is the season this? over? Uh, it's over. We, Maz. We got slaughtered. No. <laughs> we got slaughtered. Uh, so instead of moving up to second, we move back to fifth. Which no. sucks because you don't get much. You, know, you get money, but you don't get as much as the top three. Well, you splitting three hundred bucks. Uh, I don't know how much we get. No, we'll probably make about three or four hundred each. Okay. Right, when it's all said and done, okay. the mystery ball, as you call it, no kidding, was up to twenty five thousand dollars. Get out of here, cash, cash, carry cash. twenty five thousand. But you can't get it all at once. They got to do twenty five drawings. If you get a thousand, what? If you, yeah, you, you can't. It's illegal. To give that it's kind like, of money it's away. Like it's like oh, with the lottery system oh. and, the, and the way things are here in Michigan. Oh. You can't give a 25000 in cash away. Oh. So it's split up. So we were there to almost midnight Ryan last night. Because if you don't make the strike, it rolls over. So then they pull oh. another ticket and another ticket. And some guys walked out of there with a lot of cash last night. Oh, my all gosh. I gotta say, but you, didn't get any, you didn't get any I got goals? in. They never called my ticket once. Dang. They called a couple of my teammates. They hit. They won a few bucks. Hey, let me ask you this question. Cause Son of a gun. Man. Y- y- you Maz, never you can, win. Maz. I, I can't win for losing. <laughs> Are people cheating? Is this like the Monopoly thing where they're like. They just put a lot of money in. This right? poor they guy. buy a lot of tickets. Let me yeah. tell you. There's guys that bought a thousand, over $1,000 worth of tickets. Because right. if you can win 25000 exactly, Yeah. I mean, they were just piling it in. Yeah. Piling it in. And, you know, some of the best bowlers there win the money. That's so, just the way it is. And then, you, you know, if your envelope wasn't so empty. 
My envelope was dirt empty, man. <laughs> had had cobwebs in it. <laughs> anyway, so we wound up fifth, and oh uh, that that's just the way it goes. What are you gonna do? So anyway, we're watching so the television at the bowling alley, and they got hockey on. I'm like, the hockey playoffs? Did the hockey playoffs start already? So I'm looking. They're still playing regular season hockey. Yeah, I saw that. The Kraken were playing. I know, but what, what are you doing? Just Seating. End what are you it. doing? Seating. End it. Yeah. All right, guys. Hey, we're going to take a break. Uh, when we come back, we'll go around the NFL. But first, a message. Hey, let's do, uh, what about uh, Boys and Girls Club? How about oh. the Boys and Girls Club? Let me let everybody know that the Boys and Girls Club of Southeastern Michigan and the Jerome Bettis Bus Stops Here Foundation, proud to present the 3C Sports Conference to educate, inform, and inspire players, parents, and coaches in our local communities, featuring impactful speakers like Jerome Bettis, Eddie George, and Adam Schefter, April 24th through the 26th. For more information and tickets, scan the QR code on the screen and sign up today. We'll be right back live from Shake Shack in downtown Detroit. A network for the city, by the city. Woodward Sports is Detroit Sports. Stop searching for a vehicle and start finding one. Les Stanford Chevrolet Cadillac makes it easy. We harness the power of multiple dealerships and own the biggest selection of GM brands in the area to get you the car you need. With the Les Stanford Group, you'll have access to four different dealerships, providing you with more makes, more models, and more choices. We're connected to more than 1,000 vehicles, and with so many high-quality CPO vehicles available, you'll find new car quality at pre-owned prices. You can start and end your search at lesstanford.com today. Come to any Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men and claim your throne for a king's treatment from one of our talented stylists. Open seven days a week, walk in anytime. Just get to a Lady Jane's today and receive a precision haircut, scalp massage, hot lather neck shave, and a hot towel treatment. A haircut should not be a chore, it should be an experience. And that's exactly what Lady Jane's has to offer. Open seven days a week, walk-ins are always welcome. There's always a location near you. Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men, it's wicked awesome. You, you smell that? That's Brad Holmes cooking. And the off-season smells good. Woodward Sports. Hey, gang, let me tell you about Guardian Alarm. They're your local security experts and have been for over 90 years. When you see this black and yellow sign out in front of your house, it tells the bad guys one thing. Stay out. Whether you are at home or on the road, they're 24-7 professional monitoring, customized solutions from real experts, and technology backed by people means you are backed by the best. Call this number right here, 1-800. Stay out. That number again, 1-800. Stay out. Stay out. Tell them today, tell them Woodward Sports sent you. And, uh, hey, while you're out and about, why don't you head on out to Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men. Awesome is when a guy can be a guy and get an amazing haircut. That Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men. Stop in, sit back, relax. Let one of Lady Jane's talented stylists make you look and feel great. Walk in anytime, seven days a week. Lady Jane's, it's wicked awesome. Speaking of stay out, guess who told me to tell you guys hi? Who said that? Jason from Guardian. Well, how about the Jason? Sent me a DM last oh, night. Oh, man. Uh, Love D- Jason. DAC. Good dude. He told me to tell you guys Oh, hi. what a great guy. Uh, I Love text with guy. him often. He's a good man. Very Absolutely. Good. No doubt about it. We are live. Hour number two of the Woodward Sports Sermani and Edwards with Maz program from Shake Shack in downtown Detroit. I took a video and I posted it on my ex account and instagram if you want to get a look oh of, good did you text did you tag me? i didn't tag oh, okay you, of just how close <laughs> this place is to the stage yeah. and the theater of the nfl draft right you just walk outside that first national bank building and i'm sure it'll be closed off next week but nonetheless this place is so close to that uh draft theater where dreams will be made and just an awesome time. We had burgers. Uh, the shake I destroyed. How was your meal? Uh, chicken sandwich is good, man. I, you know, I'm, I'm on camera, so I didn't want to go too ham. <laughs> I, I didn't want to really destroy it like that. But it was really good. So uh, I recommend everybody come down and get a chicken shack sandwich. Good question is, how much are they going to do in revenue <laughs> next week? Oh, man. Oh, my God. God. Like, all the all whole, these right? people right here, this is a great location. You know, I'll tell you, though, and, and, and I'll tell you from experience, and I'm not going to say any names. But the NFL is not easy to deal with. Nah. You know, when you're trying to figure out how to actually get coverage down here, um, it is a pain in the you know what. <laughs> They're like they it's like we're the NFL and we don't care. I'll tell you a secret. Like 
That's everything right? in the NFL. <laughs> you know? <laughs> From plan to merchandise to access. Access is a tough thing in the NFL because it's super corporate-like. Yeah. Super corporate-like in its levels. They, they corporate? It's mob. True. But they want to make you go through so many It does feel like the mob levels. a little It's the mob. Bit. Hey, Pete Rozelle. What are you talking about? That's it, baby. Yeah, that's but, your guy, too. But even Love just him. being anywhere downtown and trying to get, like, coverage or do live shots yeah. or anything like that, to get an answer from the NFL is like going to get a root canal. I mean, it's just like <laughs> it's incredibly difficult to deal with. But, Facts. But doesn't it keep that, that level of exclusivity? It doesn't keep that level like once you get access. Like, they make you no feel doubt. like, oh, man, like, I There's finally no doubt. I cracked the scale. Like, There's no doubt. Yeah, Absolutely. Getting an NFL party versus, like, getting an NBA party or NHL or anything else. If you get an NFL party, it's like, all right, like, who'd you know? How'd you get in? Because, like you said, they are they're tight. That's right. Pause. Yeah, let me start you guys off talking of the draft. Yep. We'll go around the NFL. Oh, let's do that, Mass. These are the latest draft odds. So, Stick, if you can put up the latest draft odds, I'll go through them with you guys. Uh, the Bears' first overall pick, they got Caleb Williams at minus 1,000. So, that's going to equal – that's to, oh, it was minus a thousand. It is now minus ten thousand. Okay. That means to win a dollar, yeah. you got to invest ten thousand dollars. Right. dollars. Yep. So that means that the contract was pretty much done by this point. That is. That's what that they means. have. Jaden Daniels. He started at plus one thousand, and he's now plus thirty five hundred to go number one. Drake May was plus eleven. Now it's plus four thousand. But it's going to be Caleb Williams. The Commanders' second overall pick for the Commanders. Jaden Daniels, the favorite, at minus 192. Drake May, plus 110. That's almost even money. And Caleb Williams, well, I shouldn't even mention that, but he's plus 6,500 to go second. Patriots Man. with the third pick. I was going to give you a Jaden Daniels and break it up Please for do. you real quick. So this is what I've been hearing about the Jaden Daniels situation, Ryan and Maz, is their, their offensive line isn't that good. They're a ways off from getting offensive line together. So – if you take one of these J.J. McCarthy, Drake May-type quarterbacks, like Ryan always says, he's going to get killed out there. He's going to get destroyed, kind of much like David Carr did when he got drafted by the Texans or Jared, uh, or uh, Detroit Lions, Joey Harrington. When he got drafted here, the offensive line wasn't good, so the quarterback gets destroyed. You get a guy like Jaden Daniels, you see what he is in terms of his mobility, getting out of the pocket, his 4-3 speed, kind of what he did to win the Heisman. He's going to avoid a lot of those tackles, so I think that's what they're going to do is – Get Jaden Daniels because yeah. he won't stay in the pocket. But he JJ won't can move a little, Bray. True, but do you want to invest the number two pick on JJ McCarthy? Would be the thought right. process between Scott, uh, Josh Harrison and Magic Johnson. So I think Jaden Daniels is a lot because of his mobility. I'm going to go out on a limb. Go ahead. JJ McCarthy is going to be the pick at two. Wow. To Washington. And there's just something. I'll tell you why. Yeah. Okay. He's not even on here. Right. Yeah. This is where I'm going with this. Who did Magic Johnson want to be the coach? Bill Belichick. Why? Because it's stability. Champions. Championships. What did Magic Johnson care about above anything else when he was a player? Winning. Championships. Who's the guy that has won the championship? We know. DJ. I, I think winners attract winners. And if Magic Johnson has any influence, and we don't know if he does or not, really, because I think he would have gotten his head coach, maybe. Yeah. Um, but I think he gets this one. And I think Magic Johnson is going to sit there and say, I know what a winner looks like. This guy has to be our pick. That's what I think. All right. I, I, I'm going to give you some pushback on that. Look, I've been letting the J.J. McCarthy love ride because I, I believe that there is something to J.J. McCarthy. I believe that he will be a first-round quarterback. I don't think you have to get to move up to get him. And I also think he's the best leader in the draft. But for you to now put him not even three, not even four, but number two to yep. the Washington Commanders based off of him being a winner, Ryan Armani, he's not the reason that Michigan are national champions. The reason is because of the defense that they've played over the last three years. The reason is the offensive line, which you love so much about the Detroit Lions. It's the same mm -hmm. thing. The run game has been insane. They won the Joe Moore two years in a row. I mean, they had 18 players at the NFL Combine. I, it's an NFL team. I, 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 understand, I, I, I understand that, but whenever you're talking quarterbacks, whenever you're talking about – those are the players that make those teams go around. So to take J.J. McCarthy, who was a part of a team, at number two, I can't see that. I just can't see that. All right, we're gonna find yeah. out. Right? Yeah, I mean, we will find out. I, look, and if he's number two, right? 
Right? You you win like if the he's biggest number, if you he, win the biggest prize if ever. He's number if, four, if he's number four, he's Ryan still wins the biggest prize. Because nobody was on this when Ryan was saying this yeah. back in October. If he's saying number he would four. Been, he's saying he's the best quarterback, should be number one. And Caleb Williams is going to be number one. But if he goes number two, that, that's a winning bet for you. <laughs> I mean, that's a winning I, bet for I, you. I, again, I even think if he goes number 15. four. <laughs> he get drafted in the top 15. <laughs> people <laughs> laughed at him for I mean, people saying, thought it, you're right. People, people weren't even saying he's a first rounder. Maybe at the end of the first round. Yeah. Go this, you know, yeah, they still hung up on Malik. You know, that. yeah, right. Come on, you know, that. all right. Patriots <laughs> third overall pick, pick. Twelve years. Favorites: Drake May. Second choice: Jaden Daniels. Third choice: Marvin Harrison. You can. It's plus two thousand that the Patriots get him as a third pick overall. Who the he, heck is going to throw him the ball? I do think New I, England is really just. I I just can't imagine them taking a quarterback. You have got to look at this as a three-year plan. Okay. A total, totally a three-year plan. You have to look at the landscape of your talent pool. Look at where you are in the NFL. Look around the NFL and understand yeah. that you are going to be t- picking in the top three or five next year as well. Yeah. So why not go out there, get the best left tackle in the game. Then trade your pick. Trade your pick. And get a get mega two picks. first rounds this yep. year, two first rounds next year, and go Go yeah. get your quarterback. That's yeah. really the way they should do it. I, I agree with that. Like, I was going to say the same thing. We've had Mike Nolan on the show how many times? Mike Nolan was a head coach of the San Francisco 49ers mm-hmm. the year I came out. They told me, Maz, they told me I was the number one player on their draft board. I was the number one potential talent on their board. They said, however, if we draft you, who the heck's going to throw you the ball? They said, so we had to draft Alex Smith. And yeah. so they took Alex Smith. Maybe it's different because it's the first overall pick. Versus the third overall pick, but it was the same scenario. If they would have drafted me at one, who the, who the heck was going to be my quarterback? And now I got to wait. Now you have those growing pains as a wide receiver. I think even if Drake May isn't, let's say, you know, a Hall of Fame quarterback at three, it'd be tough to pass on a Drake May or Joe Alt if I was the uh, the, the Patriots. If you can't I, get that deal I, to move back, I don't know why I'm bothered by this so much, but this guy got got to me. Just a fan on the chat. Oh boy, I'll admit it. You got to me. He says. Ryan claimed J.J. would be at number one. Oh. Then he backtracked. Now he says number two, king of hot takes. Brother, if this kid goes in the top four, I win. Period. Yeah. You, 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 at that point, you're just hating to hate. Yeah. Right. You know, He's at that point, you're just, right. ha- you're just hating to yeah. hate. You know what I mean? Yeah. Back when I said it, this kid's being talked about as a late first, maybe second round pick. Tweener. Tweener. Yeah. Where's his home? So, uh, yeah, anyway. Don't worry about him. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the card. All right, guys, doing the Woodward Sports well, from yeah, Shake Shack he, today he in downtown the Detroit. Detroit. Stick Lyle over here. Mav- Cardinals pick at four. Their favorite is Marvin Harrison, minus 200. J.J. McCarthy. Pick it where? Minus one, plus 175. This is the Cardinals. Mm. The Cardinals J.J. Spot. McCarthy. Cardinals spot. Well, it says Cardinals, fourth. You're right, yeah, fourth, right. Overall fourth overall pick. Spot, yeah. Fifth overall pick, you got Malik Neighbors, J.J. McCarthy, Marvin Harrison. What's J.J.'s deal there? Plus 275. Means he's going to be gone by four. He's in the f- okay. he's in the six, too. Malik Neighbors, J.J., and Roma Dunze. Plus 550 this time for the fifth overall that pick. That means he's not getting past four. What they're telling you is that the odds increase. Yeah. It is uh, working hard over here. here. But check out this place. Just take a walk with me for a minute. I'm inside Shake Shack right now. Just take a quick walk with me. Go out this door. The first na- Just to clarify, in the Cardinals National Building. Sorry for the call. They're all in on Kyler Murray. They're not drafting a quarterback. This is the fourth overall That is correct. Right. The Cardinals are not drafting a quarterback, but in the Cardinals spot. So that would be the fourth pick. Plus 175, yeah. which is not a that's, – that's pretty low. Yeah, that's about as yeah. low as you can get yeah. without having to pay any juice. There you go. That's your updated odds. We like to give those to you as uh, the draft. Marvin uh, Harris is coming Jr. soon. Number four. Well, there you go. Yeah. I like that you'll all pick to the Tennessee Titans. we not have any sound, seen- guys? I'm hearing about sound on the chat. I've seen that a couple times in terms of uh, the Titans taking Joe all. You know, you see who they doubled down on this year. It's your boy Will Levis. They're yep. starting him again at quarterback, so you want to be able to protect that blind side, Will Levis. So that Joe all to Titans could be a real move if something doesn't if happen. If he with gets the char- by, if the he Chargers. gets by Chargers, yeah. right? Um, 
thick the chat is saying they just okay. Um, I don't know. Can you guys hear us? I hear you guys. I know we can hear each other, but uh, all right. Well, we're way. doing good. Well, how about we take a break? Okay. How about we do that? Good idea. And then uh, we'll work it out from there. I'm sorry. Okay. It's where I take Jeter, my man. Don't settle for less. Give your pet the best. It's Premier Pet Supply. PremierPetSupply.com. Hands down, Michigan's best pet store. Family owned and operated for over 30 years. 13 Metro Detroit locations. 60 brands of food at the lowest prices available. Curbside delivery if you need it. And they've got nutritionists on call if you have any questions about your pet's needs. Give your pet the best. Don't settle for less. It's PremierPetSupply.com. And with the first pick in the 2024 media draft, Detroit selects Woodward Sports. Thank you for making us the number one digital network in Detroit. BGCSM 3C Sports Conference is coming during NFL Draft Week, starting on April 24th. Special guests will include Jerome Bettis, Barry Sanders, Eddie George, Aline McNeil, Calvin Johnson Jr., Sean H. Wilson, Cynthia Freeland, Adam Scheffner, and more. This event is open to athletes, coaches, and parents, but space is limited. So go to our website and purchase your tickets today at www.bgcsm.org. Good, man. How you doing? What you got for me today? Let's have a look, man. Ooh, 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 ooh. I see the one I want right there. That's the one I'm looking for. Welcome to the winner circle, Blake. Hey. Figer Law. All we do is win. All we do is win. Thank you to all the fans for making Woodward Sports your number one online destination for Detroit sports. We promise not to drop the ball. When it comes to chicken sandwiches, I have a sleeper for you. Actually, you guys just saw me eat it on air. It is the Chicken Shack Sandwich from Shake Shack. The sandwich is amazing. Also, get some of those crinkly fries, just like you saw. And then the shake. Shakes are to die for. But that sandwich, sandwich is fire. It's fresh. It is healthy. It's here at Shake Shack. And, hey, come on over, Les Stanford Chevrolet Cadillac Buick GMC. What happens when you run a great business for over 50 years? You expand and offer more products to more people. That's exactly what Les Stanford did by adding the Buick GMC brands. That's right, in Ferndale on Woodward Avenue, just south of Nine Mile, Les Stanford Buick GMC, and, of course, Les Stanford Chevrolet Cadillac in Dearborn, where they have been on Michigan Avenue for over 55 years. You can find the brand you want under one umbrella, LesStanford.com, LesStanford.com. Together, let's drive. Now this. All right, guys, doing the Woodward Sports from Shake Shack today in downtown Detroit. Stick oh. over here. Maz is uh, working hard over here. But check out this place. Just take a walk with me for a minute. I'm inside Shake Shack right now. Just take a quick walk with me. Go out this door to the first national building. Sorry for the close up there. And here we are. The NFL draft in Detroit. Just out there. Oh, whoa, I almost just tripped. You can kind of see the stage right there. I mean, are you kidding me? The NFL draft in Detroit. Come back over here. We got big Aiden up there. Wait Look at that the draft theater right outside that fence. Everybody working hard. Getting ready. NFL Draft in Detroit. Our show today, Woodward Sports on YouTube, live from Shake Shack. Check it out. And that's right, we are live from Shake Shack in downtown Detroit in advance of the NFL Draft in Detroit next week, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, round one. On Thursday at 8 o'clock, the footprint will open up at noon. The NFL experience will open up at noon. Then on Friday, same deal, opens at noon. Uh, draft starts at 7. And then on Saturday, rounds 4 through 7 will take place. And, of course, the NFL draft begins at noon on Saturday. Noon to about 5, 6 o'clock, somewhere in that area. But uh, the time is here. I believe outside of your city hosting the Super Bowl, this is the second biggest event any one city could host. We just saw the Final Four in Arizona. 140,000 people showed up to that event. 
WrestleMania, two-night WrestleMania in Philadelphia, 146,000 people. And here we go next week. You are looking at upwards of 300 to 500,000 oh. NFL football fans packing the city of Detroit, Braylon. There are six NFL cities within a four-hour drive of Detroit. That is as close a group yeah. that you will have to any one city. Yeah, 100%, man. It's, it's, but I got to give you some credit. First of all, when we watched that video of you uh, navigating yourself through these cameras and these wires, I saw the balance, though. I saw you catch yourself. Oh, up. man. Never came Never out of the game. Never came out of the game. Never came out. Hey, we got the uh, challenge over here, too. That's set up. We, we got to get the camera to get out there. challenge. We got to get the camera to get out there. I got that. It's, it's a, I don't know, I gotta get, I gotta get one. You got the intro now with the basketball shot from last year, man. Let, let, <laughs> let, let me live, man. Let me get on the board. But it's gonna be fun, like you said, man. Six, uh, six cities within four hour driving, so you have a lot of fans coming in from other cities, other teams, flying in as well. You know, DTW is one because it was rated the number three. No, it's the best to me. Yeah, no, I actually, I think it airport. may have been number one. I think it's it was rated airport. number one airport in the country. So easy access in the DTW. A lot of flights for people to come from wherever they want to come from. It's gonna be exciting. I think this is an exciting time in the NFL, man. I'm watching this game a little bit, you know, with Eli Manning and a young Odell Beckham oh, and yeah. Des Bryant, and that was a good time. It always seems to get better, man. And I know this is one of the games you probably still have with your DVR, oh, knowing you, but it's going to be fun. It's going to be live, and, and I think the city's ready for it. I think this is where the city was going, like you said, Ryan, hosting this large event. Uh, the city was heading this direction before COVID. Now here we are four years uh, later, and now we have the NFL draft. So yeah, I'm excited to see what the city puts out. You know, kind of if those uniforms last night were any indication. Oh, man. Fire. The city's, the city's going to do something. My credit cards. Yeah. Denied. Gonna, my credit cards are going to be on fire this weekend, uh, next weekend. I'm going to be down here. Have your daughters conned you out of any oh, uh, concert can, tickets lately? No, not really. <laughs> they, 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 my little one's trying to get down here. For, I think there's a concert actually on Thursday night okay. at one of the theaters. I'm yeah, Big sure. Sean is here. Yeah. Oh, Big, Big Sean, Sean is he, okay. kicking off the draft. He's opening the draft. Yeah. Okay. But I, we'll you know, all the stuff, the NFL experience, that means there's going to be so much gear to buy. Who buys more NFL gear than me? I don't right. know if there's anyone. But uh, uh, last night at Ford Field, and I wish I had the video to show you. I'm telling you, there were thousands of people in line waiting to get in the Lions store to buy the new gear. To buy the new gear. There were thousands of people in line. I, I was out of breath looking at these people standing in line yeah. all together. People are going to be... They're going to be buying everything, man. There's going to be so much stuff down here. If you guys have never Great. been to an NFL experience, wait till you see it. Great thing about the uniform, uniform reveal last night to me. Last year, I spent an awful lot of money buying Lions gear. All of that Lions gear still lives. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because they didn't change the logo. The logo. All of that Lions gear lives. And I think that's the hardest part for any time you get – New yeah. uniforms. Yes, the jerseys are new. If you want to buy a jersey, you got to buy a new jersey. But if you just have Lions gear, yeah. man, all of that lives, and I'm just so thankful for that. Because, you know, I mean, you spend a lot. It's a, stuff costs a lot of I'll money. I'll be getting all the you old know? crap that's on clearance. Yeah. That's what I'm buying. <laughs> yeah. You know what's good about that, too, Ryan, is last year was the 90th, the 90-year anniversary. Yeah. So a lot of that 90-year anniversary stuff is going to live on regardless because right. it's classic for that right. particular year. So you're absolutely correct about that. I know you guys talked about the jerseys. I didn't get necessarily a chance to get in here yeah, with you guys. Yeah, uh, I, I was late. But um, we were you, not late. There was what, a miscommunication. Yeah, I appreciate that. I yeah. appreciate that. I, That's there, was, a big there was a miscommunication. Speaking of that miscommunication, Ryan Lentz is one of those guys that tell me he ordered right away as soon as he saw it. And this is a young guy. You know, Ryan, shout out yeah. to Ryan Lentz, what was sports. And he said he – Went online right away and got him. So it's going to be a lot of people. What jersey did he get? Did he tell black you? one. Black yeah. one. Yeah, that black. So what do you guys think about the uniforms? We saw them. Love them. We saw the leak yesterday, but now that we've Best seen the Best uniform in the NFL. Best uni okay, you're going to go that far. Best uniform in the NFL. Classic 90s, big block lettering, the blue and the white. I even like the black jersey. I just like the yeah. black jerseys with the black pants. I don't necessarily care for the – Blue pants yep. with the black jersey. Just don't wear blue and white again. I don't like yeah. the white and blue. Yeah, don't do the that. The white jersey, yeah. blue pants, I hate. I this, like the all white. This is like the only set, the only uniforms Barry Sanders are, like rarely had a good yep. game. But, yeah. His last game was against the Ravens. It was. And, and it was, like it was 23 in, yards. in Baltimore, and he, he sweat through those blue pants. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget it. I remember. Yeah, 23 yards rushing. Yeah. I remember that. Horrible. But, um. 
just thinking about them, I think they're one of those They're good. I like them. I think they, they added a little bit of the 90s. They kept it a little new. They added that some, home jersey uh, is as good as any. I, I like it, but also, it, I think it depends on the success. Uniforms are funny like that. Like, if the Lions go out there and they do what they're supposed to, they do what we expect them to do, I think these uniforms are going to be the best in the NFL or some of the best in the NFL. If they go out there and they're average, it's like, eh, uniform's just okay. Yeah. Am I right? What I like about the white jersey yeah. is it has Detroit across the chest. Yeah. And the black and the home has Lions across it. So, you know, it, I like the Detroit on, on the jersey. Well, I just that's don't like, like baseball, the right? Yes. It's like baseball. Yeah, exactly. At home, you wear your Same. logo. Yeah. On the road, you wear the city that you're Correct. in. Correct. That's what I like. Yeah. I really do. The you know, Boston Red Sox, yeah. perfect example. At home, it's Red Sox. On the yeah. road, it's B. Boston. 100%. Right. You know? Yankees, NY at home. I'm yeah. just Stripes. glad they got rid of yeah. WCF. Yeah. I, it's I, I, on I, the helmet. I'm, prob- I'm talking about on the jersey. Okay. I don't mind it being on the helmet as a helmet as an accent. I didn't like it on the jersey because it was a huge part of the uniform. It was. At WCF. Like, get that out of here. I liked it as an accent. I didn't like it around the whole sleeve. I love the stripes on yeah. the helmet. I like the stripes on the jerseys. I, I really think, I think they did a phenomenal job. What about job. the blue face mask? That was a I love must. It. By the way, Bray, yeah. I need the new helmet, okay? Yeah, okay I got you. Okay, I, I, got I thought you. of you right away. Like, all right, Bray's getting me the new helmet. <laughs> John, shout out to John Yu. Yeah, I, John I'll Yu. see you soon, John Yu. Thanks, buddy. Hey, uh, Tom. Uh, it's, not the best, it's not the best in the league, right? Please. Yeah, I, it's the best he, uniform please. in the league. No, it's not nah, better he, than the 49ers. Okay. It's not better than the 49ers. Best uniform, and best JJ's uniform going number two. This is the, how about this? This is the best Detroit Lions uniform we've ever seen. There you I go. I give you that. Yeah, one hundred percent. Good. Okay. I like Fair that. enough. Good. Is Good. it the best uniform in Lions history? The no, no, in the NFC North. Let's let's start in NFC North. I know you guys are Green Bay man. Well, I mean, oh. Green Bay and Chicago Classic. are so yeah, flat. You know what I mean? Classic. How about yeah. how about Minnesota? I don't, don't like the purple game. It's fine. They don't. It's fine. That's like no. I mean, it, Green Bay and Chicago are here. Green Bay, Chicago, Dallas, and San Francisco are in a league of their own. Okay. That's, Pittsburgh, Raiders. That's really what about what the happens. Steelers? What about Steelers. Okay, and so Steelers and Raiders. So oh, Raiders. Six, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, so can we agree that those six yeah. are in a league of their own? We're in the top half. Agree. And then I think, yeah, the Lions. <laughs> and what are all those What are all those fr- the su- franchises associated with? The Winning. Multiple Super Bowls. Winning. 100%. Winning. Multiple. At the beginning, too. Multiple. Like in, in the crux. The Raiders were the crux of the 70s. Steelers, 70s. Uh, yeah, so, yes. Dolphins. 49ers, they still represent winning. If the Dolphins go back to their old ones, that's top three as well. Maz, do you have any more NFL stories yeah. you'd like to get through? Okay, because uh, I'd like to do that. Then I'd like to get so, to some um, NBA and okay. then some, cl- some Tigers as well. Yeah, absolutely. How about the Bill Belichick future? Now, do we have this one stick? Bill Belichick's future, according to Bill Belichick, now, are you going to be able to see this on the screen, or do I have to bring it up myself? Well, can I um, – hold on. I can, I can bring it up myself. It's not a problem. Yeah. I will read it to you. Here it is. According to ESPN, Bill Belichick says this. He has told confidants he would be interested in coaching the Cowboys, Eagles, or Giants. Oh, two of the three I hit yesterday. Ready for this next one. He was blindsided by Atlanta's hiring of Raheem Morris. He was not among the top three choices for any of the Falcons' top decision makers during their coaching search. Wow. This is according to Bill. Believes he will get a head coaching interview next year. And finally, plans to sign a media deal soon with Peyton Manning's Omaha Productions. Omaha. Omaha. Bill Belichick's going to Hollywood, folks. He's next week going to be on the Pat McAfee show as a draft analyst. I hope he brings his dog. Because that was, uh, you know, the, the, the Mac Jones draft, if you remember that one, the COVID draft. But, yeah, that's Bill Belichick for you, according to uh, Andrew Callahan of the NFL. So, Ryan's right about the Giants job. I think next year, if it doesn't work out, Brian Dable, I think he could get the, uh, the Giants job. The Mara family, they were there when he was there way back in the day. The connections there, Ryan, you hit that one. Yet again, pause. But just thinking about this right now, remember Bill Belichick? Once he got, it, he did his resignation speech, if mm-hmm. you will, for the Patriots. Most I've ever heard him talk. He put a suit on. He was a little more personality. He was a little, little more trying this new thing out. Mass. This what this year is about to be for for Bill Belichick. This is a rebranding. 
This is Bill Belichick getting on camera. This is Bill Belichick working with Peyton Manning. This is him showing you some personality, showing the naysayers, and maybe showing the potential owners of next year who are going to – he's going to get an interview next year. He'll get multiple. But these, this is showing him, hey, I can connect. Hey, I do have a personality. He hey, smiled I'm not, more during the yep. Pat McAfee interview I'm not than doing I've gloom. seen him in 20 years of yeah. coaching. It's, in 20 years. Which – which means he understands this is a new day and age, and you have to adapt for people to want to work to work with you. And I said this yesterday, just to reiterate the point. And Bray, I'm not sure you were in the studio at this time when I said this, so I'm curious to see what you think about it. The great equalizer in life is time. I told that to my daughter last night. There is an old saying that time heals all wounds. The further you get away from something, the less minutia something yeah. becomes and I think Bill Belichick is that kind of guy you know what I mean like there is so much minutia when it comes to Bill Belichick all the documentaries all of the losing all of the Tom Brady all of the uh the, the trainer uh, yeah, I forget uh, Alex, his name. Guerrero. Alex Guerrero <laughs> what about Pedro you know, Malcolm, Malcolm, Butler. Malcolm Butler Malcolm Butler all of the minutia and now you're gonna see him you see him smiling on Pat McAfee you see him smiling yeah. uh, now with Peyton Manning and Eli Manning. He's going to be breaking down games. People are going to be like, I love this guy. You, and he's ultimately going to endear himself, and people are going to want to say, okay. Yeah. Welcome back. Welcome back, Bill. You, you know what I see? Who's his best friend? His best friend's Nick Saban. Yeah. Nick Saban's his best friend around the same age. They've been coaching together. How do you think that conversation goes on the phone? Where hey, do you want to go today? Hey, How hey, much Nick, money do you want to hey, spend uh, today? But, but Nick has a little more personality than he lets on. And I, I think we saw that in the last couple of years at, um, at Alabama. Showed a lot more. He's another guy that smiled a lot more. But I think that Aflac. 100% those Dion commercials. But I think talking to Nick Saban, because Nick's been around kids. Nick's had to adapt again and again. The Michigan State situation, going to LSU, winning the national championship, not necessarily being successful with the Dolphins, coming back to Alabama. So I think you call your boy Nick Saban and say, hey, look, man, like, hey, Nick, what do I do? What's the move? Uh, and Nick told him, hey, look, you need to lighten up. Like, even when I was in college, I had to come off the tight self right. at, at Alabama and get a little more loose and be able to deal with these players because the players will keep you young if you allow them. I guarantee you Nick Saban had a good talk with uh, Bill Matt, Bill Velas because you're seeing it. He's starting to try to open up just like we saw Nick Saban towards the end of his career at Alabama. Don't forget how bad he looked during that Apple uh, TV broadcast, the uh, documentary of the Patriots oh. dynasty. Mm. He looked – Really bad. And after it was all done and produced, the players that kind of threw him under the bus a little, they said, hey, they interviewed us for like two hours. Yeah. And they only took 10 seconds of what I said. Right, right. Rodney and they, Harrison. Uh, yeah, and they uh, painted it against the twins, Bill. McCoy yeah. twins. They were really upset by they that. They were. Can I, can I ask you this question, Ryan and Maz? Ryan, yeah, I'll ask please. you first. If you're, if, if you're judging Robert Kraft in this situation, do you look at him a little bit as petty? Yes. Because he pretty much had final say on this. Yes. Look what I, he did to him lately. I completely yeah. he lost him the Atlanta job. My, I have complete. I never thought it was possible to make Bill Belichick a sympathetic figure <laughs> in my point. life. That's a good point. And I believe that Robert Kraft is now the villain. He's a villain. And Bill Belichick looks like the sympathetic figure. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of what I feel like I'm now. with you. I feel like, okay – Here's another billionaire screwing the little guy. That's kind of what I feel like. Pause. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's kind of <laughs> what I feel like. Here's the bil here's yeah. the multi-billionaire crazy rich guy that is looking down on the guy that made him many billions over by winning six championships in the NFL. Yeah, the nerve. Right. <laughs> the nerve. I mean, it's kind of like. What, what do you want me to do? I gave you six chips. Come on, Bob. From zero to six. In the time that Bill Belichick first got there to now, they're the number one grossing team in professional sports in terms of the money that that franchise has made, in terms of what their net worth is versus where it was. That's crazy. And the thing about it, they didn't have to do it, Ryan. We all already knew mm. that Bill was responsible for the Alex Guerrero situation, for running off key veterans, for running off Tom Brady. We already knew it. You didn't have to put it on and co-sign on it, and now we know, wait, why'd you do Bill like this? We already knew that now. Yeah, your point, he's, a he's not a villain anymore. I mean, seriously. And Kraft yeah. got away with what he did. Murder, you know. Right. Kraft got away with the whole uh, the house spa, no doubt. Remember. 
Uh, guys, I got to get another break in. Uh, when we come back, I would like to get through some uh, NBA, if we could. Two games tonight uh, involving playoff appearances, right? The final play-in games of the year. We'll do that. We'll take a look at the Tigers as well. But first, a message from Figer Law. All right, guys. After an accident, people need to hire a lawyer more than any other time. So make Figer Law your first call. Call 1-800-A-WINNER. 1-800-A-WINNER. Their team of trial lawyers will get you the money you deserve. Figer Law. All we do is win. Get a shot up. This is for the win. All of Detroit sports teams live on Woodward. All of Detroit sports coverage lives on Woodward Sports. Driving the best in Detroit sports coverage. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. At work and at home, we're there with smarter security solutions. Featuring complete automation with customized alerts and more. For over 90 years, we've been the company that's been counted on to protect what matters most, all with personalized service and care. Right now, for a limited time, receive a free video device plus free installation with a new home system. Guardian Alarm. We protect Michigan. Network for Detroit by Detroiters. Welcome to the Woodward Sports Network. Just to go check out the Nashville chicken sandwich. The Nashville hot, ladies and gentlemen, it is back. Nashville hot pizza, the fries, the chicken sandwich, and the Nashville hot chicken tenders. Also, fresh salads, crispy pizza, and the sides are fresh. And I stand on that. Went last Sunday, and me and my family had a great time. Sorokis is the place for you. All you got to do. Let's pull up on them one time. It's the Rokies. That's right. And uh, good news, bad news, gang. The bad news, insurance rates Ooh. in Michigan going up across the board. The good news is that Swiss Insurance is here to help. Right now, more than ever, it is critical for you to have your insurance reviewed. Swiss will make sure your carrier does not slip in extra fees or raise deductibles. Call market Swiss Insurance today or visit SwissINS.com. Tell them Woodward Sports sent you. All right. I'm making a prediction now. Okay, prediction. Hey. Maz, Ryan, this is my prediction. Okay. Hey. Silent Mike, I'll get you on this too. Oh, Clubber Lang you're talking about. Hey. Rocky three. I don't think the Chargers trade out of that position. When you just look at the Chargers and what they've done in the offseason so far, they got rid of Mike Williams. They got rid of Keenan Allen. And if you remember last year, oh, also they got rid of Josh Palmer, the tight end, and also Quentin Johnson or Quentin Nelson, Quentin Johnson from TCU, he didn't necessarily look like a first-round wide receiver last year. They got to get some talent. They got to get some skill. Marvin Harrison, if he's there at five, or uh, another wide receiver, or maybe even Brock Bowers, they take a shot. I Don't forget, Austin Eckler's gone, too. Eckler? Yep. Yeah, Austin Eckler, baby. I completely agree with you. 100% the Chargers <laughs> will not trade out of that pick because – Joe Alt. Four quarterbacks are going one, two, three, four. There's going to be nobody to trade up for. Oh, this is true. Okay, okay. So by default. <laughs> by default. Right. Offensively. Uh, guys, two games tonight in the NBA. And uh, the first one is really unfortunate for the Miami Heat. Jimmy Butler is going to be out for several weeks with an MCL strain. The Heat are a one-and-a-half-point favorite still, nonetheless, against the Chicago Bulls. The winner gets the eighth seed and takes on the my or excuse me the Boston Celtics, sacrificial lambs either one of them. Yeah, they're both they're both sacrificial lambs. It doesn't matter who wins that game. I'm surprised the Heat are favored, even though Butler's out. So that kind of tells me the Heat will win, right? Does that tell you that? I just don't. I mean, are you expecting Kobe White to have another 42 points? Probably not. <laughs> Like, and I don't think yeah. he's going to get 42 points. I don't think Valanchunas is going to play as I mean, good as he did last game. So, yeah. yeah. You know, I look. I it doesn't look, matter, though. Boston's going to kill yeah. whoever wins. I know. I do look at those times where Jimmy Butler was out last year in a big game here, a big game there. And then Tyler Hero would spring for 38. Or, but they were know, hot who's then. the other guy? Max. Max. He's not there. Struess. Strauss. Oh, Max Strauss. He's not there anymore. He got well, paid. Duncan Robinson. I ain't seen him hit a shot since Michigan. <laughs> 
Well, he got ninety million. Some of you must have been hit. Some of you got a ninety million dollar contract. Ain't hit a shot since. <laughs> <laughs> but Ryan, that's when the Heat were actually playing really well yeah. and they were hot. This ain't the same team. Yeah, they yeah. finished strong they're, they're last done, year. I think. But you know what? Yeah. I'm rooting for the Bulls in this game only because my guy Chuck Swirsky is the is the voice of the Bulls. That's oh, about yeah. it. Other uh, than that, I don't care. Kings and Pelicans. Fly, Fly Pelicans. Fly Pelicans. Uh, New Orleans is a one and a half point favorite in this game. Without Zion. Is he out yeah. officially? I think so. Yeah. Um that, Zion that, Williamson out. Out. Wow. Yeah, I, I don't know how oh. you have the Pelicans favorite over uh the, the Sacramento Kings. Because they're five and zero against them. I understand that. But not after what I saw in the round one against the Lakers. I mean, I'm talking about a C.J. McCollum that was not there. Brandon Ingram got benched in the fourth quarter. Zion Williamson won't even be joining this trip. I don't think you put them against uh, Keegan Murray, who's playing really good out of Iowa. I actually won him uh, for the Pistons a couple years ago. Bonus, a bonus. And then, obviously, De'Arian Fox. Yeah, and then the NBA uh, playoffs start this weekend. Uh, four games on Saturday. Is there any series upset, upset that you see? Let me just... Run through yeah, a couple run them of them down. for you, okay? Go one at a time. Magic and Cleveland. Cleveland is Cleveland is the uh, home well. Team. Uh, actually, Magic, Magic's going to win that series. Cleveland's a home team. Magic will win the series. Magic's going to win that series. So what's Cleveland? What number are they? Four or five? Four, right? Uh, that is the That's four perfect. five game. Okay. Four yeah. five series. Okay. Yeah, Orlando's going to win that. All right. I like that, how Paulo Bencaro has been playing lately. He's been dominating. Phoenix and Minnesota. Phoenix and Minnesota. Ooh. That is the uh, three-six matchup. I'll take. I'll take the T Wolves. Sign me up for the T Wolves. I think as well. the Timber Puppies uh, are going to advance in this one. It's Although the Suns are, they're, they got KD. They're built for this. But they haven't meshed well. Like ever since you had a Bradley Bill and since he got healthy, like they haven't played a brand of basketball that we thought. It's kind of like when you had. James Harden, KD, and Kyrie Irving up in Boston. I mean, uh, not Boston, excuse me, in Brooklyn. When they finally got together on the court, they look like deer in headlights. And I think that's what you're still seeing. KD hasn't been himself in no, a while, man. Well, he's getting KD's older. KD's not himself. I think Booker's uncomfortable running the point. So, give me the T-Wolves and Anthony Edwards, man. Shout out to my cousin. In the 2-7 <laughs> matchup in the East, the 76ers and the Knicks play each other. Oh, yeah. Game one at Madison Square Garden. What do you guys make of that? Come on, man. Knicks are going to win. This is, Knicks are winning that series. This is a battle of two teams that never show up in the playoffs. Yeah. Like, you're, it's like right. you pick whoever you pick is by default. The Sixers never show up in the playoffs. The Knicks never make the playoffs, and when they do, they get slaughtered. When was like the last did. time the Sixers won? 81? Uh, 82. 82. 82. Last 82. time. Yeah, 100%. 83, wasn't it? Uh, it was the year I was born. 80, was yeah. it? I thought it was, it was the early Sixers. 80s. No, it, was 80. it was the Sixers in 83. Yeah, they beat the Lakers. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the Knicks, you know, the Knicks' last championship was 72. 73. 73. Speak, Willis Reed, most overrated player in basketball I'll history. be quiet. Speaking <laughs> of the Lakers, <laughs> Lakers Nuggets in the 2-7 there. Uh, well, you, I'm going to let you d- tell me this one because you don't think the Lakers have a chance. No chance. What's the spread? Uh, in game one? Yeah. Seven and a half. Wow. <laughs> Change your mind. The, 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 the Lakers lost to the Nuggets, got swept last year in the Western Conference Finals. They lost every game against them in the regular season this year. In the playoffs – uh, they'll Playoffs. win a game. They'll win a game. Uh, That's it. They'll win a game. Uh, Denver in in five. Denver in four or five. You want a lock? You want my Ryan Hermione lock? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my Ryan Hermione lock. The Lakers are gonna win game one, and then they're gonna lose four in a row. The reason why? Okay. The Lakers know they have to win that first game, because if they get the, if they lose the first game, it's completely over. They're not winning game two. They're not winning three or four. They have to win game one. That sounds like Rashid. They will not win game two. 100%. So, a- a- Anthony Davis, who only plays odd games anyway, man. Remember last year's playoff? He would have 40 game one. Yeah. Game two, he'd have 10. Game three, he'd have 40. Game four, he'd have 12. Guarantee AD gets off, pause, and then LeBron James triple-double to the tune of 28, 10, and 10. Lakers win game one and gets lose four in a row. Okay. Okay. Do me a favor, Ryan. <laughs> Now, you might not have these gambling sites on your phone anymore. I don't. It's uh, just ESPN. Is there a chance? You just look at ESPN. Is, yeah. is there a chance <laughs> right. be, uh, the odds to win the series? I don't have that access. You don't have that. Brady, no. you have that? You could probably uh, pull it up on your phone. I don't have that I, access. If th- I'm telling you, man, I got a hunch that this Laker team oh, is going to win this series. Bray, you got to have it. I got, And I Where don't want them to win. You, you want to see it? Yeah, yeah, let me see it. I, see, oh, I don't yeah. want them to win. I don't want I, I, I want LeBron out. All right, I'm not a fan. You guys know that. 
Yeah. I got a hunch that the Lakers are going to win this series, and I'm going to tell you why. It's the Nuggets. Man. They've got the championship already in the bag. Okay. This is it. Last stand for, for LeBron. Mm. Last stand. Then he's not getting better. He's breaking down. Little at a time, though. He's a, he's unbelievable. Yeah. He's unbelievable. But I, this is it, man. If they don't win this series yeah. and continue this year, when are they ever going to win? I don't know hey. how to get the series prices. Can I ask you a question? I bet you it's three to one odds against. Can I ask you a serious question, man? Yeah. Did you stop by uh, our former place? No. On Nine Mile before you did the show? No. Did you That's stop the horse it? track? Did, no, not the horse track. I know what he's the, talking the about. The gas track. He wants me to, like, <laughs> what? did I take a gummy? Uh, <laughs> what are you smoking that you say that the I, Lakers are going to beat the Denver I, I Nuggets? I got a hunch. A hunch on what? Is, I, is Jokic hurt? Did no. Michael did Michael Porter trade teams all I'm of a sudden? Look is, it up. is Aaron Gordon no longer in up. the start? Is Jonte Porter on the? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> is KCP not the guy still making threes in the corner? How about that? Is, KCP and Reggie Jackson are on the Denver Nuggets. And KCP is a major contributor. <laughs> KCP won with the Lakers. Right. He's oh got two God. chips since he left Multiple here. Multiple championships. Is Jamal Murray not on that team somehow, some way? Is he back in Toronto hanging out? Hey, <laughs> let me let me ask you guys. Finish up a couple of series here. Boston, we think they're going to get through, right? Yeah. Um, whoever, like, I think the Thunder, even though they're the one seed, I think they're going to lose to the eight seed if it's Sacramento. Okay. If Sacramento wins tonight and is the eight seed over OKC, I think Sacramento wins that series. If it's the uh, New Orleans Pelicans, I think OKC wins. Not going to happen. Just in, in SGA, I do believe. I love them, too. I yeah. just think they're a young, younger team, and I think Sacramento taking Golden State to seven games last yeah. year in the first round should have won that series yeah. last year. Uh, I think they've got the experience. OKC was not in the postseason last year. Light the um, beam. Light the beam. Light the beam. I that, just think that, that, that Sacramento, that, that place to play in oh, Sacramento is as fun. hard as there is in the NBA. You know what this OKC team is to me? And maybe, you, you know, maybe you're right. They are experienced. I mean, you remember OKC back in the day with James Harden, Russell uh, Westbrook, and KD. Remember when they first got going? You know, they were a two-seed and got popped by our older seed. But once they started getting rolling, once they believed, OKC started taking over. They went to Western Conference Finals. They lost a couple of times. And then they made it to the championship and lost to LeBron. So I think this OKC team is a little more ready than we think. I just like SGA, but I could see inexperience playing a factor. Final two series to go through. Dallas and the Clippers. I'll take the Clips. Dallas. I go with Dallas, too. Hey, give me Luka and Kyrie. And then, um, Kyrie's pissy to make the USA team. Pacers and Bucks, no Giannis. Early. Pacers. No Giannis early. I'm going to go with Rick Carlisle's Indiana Pacers as well. Yeah, Pacers. you guys just don't like the Bucks. No, I really don't. I do <laughs> like the Bucks. I just I've watched them enough this year to know that they ain't it. But and seven I use games. Eight for effect. Well, they got to win four. Yeah. Out of seven. Yep. You don't think Dame Lillard going to win him a few games? I, yeah, he can win him a few games, but he can't win him four. I'll take the Bucks. The whole two, serve. Three. The, I'll take the Bucks. I think the biggest thing with the Bucks is when they got rid of Drew Holiday, they lost that player that could play both ways. Dame Lillard plays no defense. He'll give you 40 and he'll give up 38. So I think losing Drew Holiday has been a huge loss for the uh, Milwaukee Bucks. Hey, Dante, uh, super fan. Dante 151. Five bucks for uh, Woodward Sports. Thanks, Dante. He says the Nuggets are minus 350 in the series. The Lakers are plus 275. That's not low. bad. That's not bad. low. Not bad. I'm, not taking, bad. I'm taking the Lakers to win the series. Not, not, not big enough odds to take the Lakers. I would just be, bet them every day, game then. That, yeah. okay, you know like, what I mean? Yeah. I'm just telling you. Yeah. They're going to win the series. It like plus that number tells me they're going right. to win the series. If it's that low, what I'm saying, if it's that low, just bet them on the money line every game. I got you. And then you'll make up, you know, with four wins. Understood. You know, you'll make up that money. Yeah. Um, that's what I would say. Um, I want to get to the Tigers. They lose two of three to Texas at home over the last couple of days. Now a six-game road trip tonight in Minneapolis. Then they'll go to uh, Tampa Bay on Monday. To then face your the guys are coming into town. Well, your old guys. The, the Royals. The, absolutely. The, the Royals. The Royals. I, I can't wait for the White Sox to get here. Um the Tigers, man, they really gave the games away. Two, two, two yeah. losses in a row based on their defense. Yeah, they gave it away. You know, that's, Even Torque. Yeah, that's not something we'll. That's not something we anticipate will be a big problem this year. Is their defense? They, they're uh, seasons young, but they're at or near the top of the Major League Baseball when it comes to uh, defense runs. Run. 
stopped by defense, yeah. whatever that stat is. My big thing is you can look at the last two series, Ryan and Madge. You look at the Minnesota series, we split. You look at the uh, Texas, we lose, you know, one uh, one to two. It'd be different if they weren't giving up so many mm-hmm. runs. Like if they if they were if they are in these games and they're losing late, but if they weren't giving up so many runs, you could look at it a little different. Okay, Twins are going to probably a team that's going to contend for the Central. You look at obviously <laughs> the Rangers are the defending world champions, but the fact that they give up so many runs that's the thing that bothers me, man. There is a silver lining though. Javi Baez, he showed he showed you something. He got a we got two doubles yesterday in the game. He was two of five. He got him, didn't strike out. Mm. He's making some good contact. Hey, he's, he's trying to earn that one sixty eight, man. Um, Javi Baez, I'll tell you, man. Two um, doubles. He's coming out of it. He's had two doubles in the RBI. Yeah. Coming out of it. Got to. Whenever hey, we, we we poop on him enough, so like when, when he, he does, does something, something good, good yeah. hey, man, you, you got to give him some love too. So no he, had, he had a good game. Hey, Maz, who do you like in the Stanley Cup playoffs? That's your uh, wheelhouse. Oh, we got to go series by series, but the first game is tomorrow. I don't think our, our audience can uh, stay up through uh, well, series by series. <laughs> well, game one, you got the Leafs at the Bruins. So you got Toronto and the Boston Bruins. I know who DJ Tom T is taking oh, in that one. But that Toronto. starts the playoffs tomorrow night. Uh, I'm sure you can catch it on ESPN and the CBC. I'll take the, that one. But I'll take the Capitals, man. I'm going to go with an upset here. Capitals upset the Rangers. Hey, Bray. Yeah. The jinx continues for the President's Trophy winners. The Capitals fought their hearts out to knock out our Red Wings. They play the, the Rangers. Rangers, best record in the league, President's Trophy winner, but they have not won since 1994, and before that they had not won before 1942. Yeah. So the Rangers really don't know how to win in the postseason. I say I'm calling the huge upset Capitals over the Rangers in round one. The one thing is, is in most sports, uh, Maz, Team would be out of steam, Ryan. Mm-hmm. Like, as hard as they fought down the last five weeks of the season, especially this last three, you would think a team be out of gas and say, you know what, that was it. They, lo- they expended everything to get to the playoffs. But hockey is a different man. Hockey is a different beast, man. When teams hit hot at the right time, Maz, in hockey, I mean, shoot, look at the St. Louis Blues a couple years ago. I mean, they were in last place in February, and they ended up winning their first Stanley Cup trophy that year. So maybe you're right. And maybe this will be a chance. I mean, it is Ovi. It is a guy yep. that is one of the best of all time, and he has won a Stanley Cup. So if anybody has experience, it's him. It's one of his last stands as well, yeah. right? Islanders playing him the Hurricanes. LeBron. Hurricanes <laughs> Hurricanes are a very good team. We had Ken Daniels on the other night. Ken, uh, The Hurricanes are one of his picks to possibly get out of the East. He liked them, and he liked the, the Rangers, I think, as well. I think the Rangers are going to be knocked out. So Islanders and Hurricanes. And you got the Lightning and the Panthers. That should be a good series. Avalanche and the Jets out west. The Avs should win that easy. Predators and Canucks. Wow, Canucks won 50 games this year. I had no idea. 109 points. Predators had 99 points. How about that? How about that, and right? I something. bet you didn't know that, right? I did not know that. And the Golden Knights against the Stars. That's the team. The Dallas Stars. Kenny Daniels likes the Dallas Stars the this year. The manager of the Oilers? The manager of the yeah, Ken Holland, the oh, manager yeah. of the Oilers. <laughs> Ken Daniels, the voice of the Red Wings. But, yeah, we want Kenny Holland to win, don't well, we? I am, Kings look, and Oilers. W- without having uh, uh, the Red Wings <laughs> in the Stanley Cup playoffs, I am absolutely rooting for the Edmonton Oilers Kenny Holland, in Kenny yeah. Holland's final year Conor as McDavid, a manager in the, NF, in, the, in the NHL. And I just get a kick out of Kenny Holland because he calls himself a manager. A manager. Not a general manager. Nope. He's Never so been the general manager. He's, he's the funny, ma- man. He's the manager. He's such a good guy. It is the gr- he, he is one of the greatest people you'll yes. just come across well, you know, in professional uh, sports. You know, well, you know, right, 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 you know. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny Holland, the manager of the Edmonton Oilers. Go we Kenny. wish him all the best. Go hey, Kenny. Did you see the big call into? Did you see the big news in the NHL today? That's the NHL Board of Governors approved the move of the Arizona Coyotes to Salt Lake. They will play at the Delta Center. Nice. Um, the owners in They're the NHL build a new will, rank for will split two hundred million dollars uh, for a uh, trans uh, for a moving fee. Yep. And uh, yeah, the Arizona Phoenix Coyotes are no more. They are the Coyotes still, though. Yeah, but yeah, are they, they gonna call them Utah or Salt Lake? I don't know that. Salt Lake City Coyotes. Salt I think Utah would be best. Utah Coyotes. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, the Utah yeah. Coyotes. There yeah. you go. Would you? Here's a here's a even funnier question. Would you? If they didn't say anything, would you even have noticed? <laughs> 
Not well, really. I mean, that Utah area, man, is a huge – I mean, I, I, I saw a story this morning that said, like, um, it was the most expensive vacations that you could yeah, take. Salt Lake City. Right? In the world. Um, Aspen, Colorado was one. Park City, Utah was two. I mean, that Utah yeah. area gets a ton of – uh, I think tiles are on here too. Yeah. yeah, they get a ton of uh, tourism, guess, to tourism traffic. Yeah. traffic. That's w- that's what I was looking for. So I mean, that'll probably be a really significant move for the NHL to get to another cold weather city, though. Too. Yeah, you I know like what it. I mean, absolutely. I like it. Now the people in Montreal and Quebec are not too happy. I mean, oh, Quebec, they shouldn't be. Quebec wants a team. They should get one. They should. There's no question about it. They Quebec should, get, should get a team back. The old Nordiques. Yeah, they had one. It was the Colorado Avalanche, right? Yep. They moved out, man. And I'd love to see the Hartford Whalers And the return. Winnipeg Jets, who the, moved to Phoenix, do have a team now. They again, do. Right? Jets are back. Yeah. <laughs> Jets are back. They're in the playoffs, too, by the way. <coughs> yes, they are. Here's a couple Last of NFL. Last one, man. Go couple, ahead. Two couple, more. A couple NFL notes for you. Spencer Rattler. You remember his name? Is he still yeah, in college? Chad Johnson liked him. Yeah. Way back Two when, Chad ago. liked him. Two years ago. Well, scouts are very high on him again. And... He could be another quarterback taken in the second, third round right. of this draft. What say you about him, uh, Bray? I, just too much changeover. I mean, he went to four different colleges. You know, you saw a lot of up and down and up and down and ebb and flow. I think he was his best uh, his last year. You go to two different colleges? Yeah, it, just, it seemed like it. Oh. Seemed, he went to, I think he went to three. Oh, I don't he know. Went, I know he went to Oklahoma. Oklahoma. He went to – he's at uh, Arkansas. South Carolina. South Carolina. That was another one in there, too. But just up and down. You know, yeah. at one point he's listed this, then he's listed that, then the f- play talks were a sub. Last year was okay, and maybe he's maybe he's figured out. Shoot, he was in college for five years. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, look, it's, uh, it's, it's not an exact science, that's it for sure. It is. Those little guys, man, very rarely make it in the NFL. I mean, you know, it, it's Kyler Murray, your – Standard bearer when it comes to quarterbacks that size. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's the same thing with Russell. I think once that athletic ability leaves, because guys that are that size, you know, Russell Wilson. Russell ran four, so four. cerebral, though. You know True. what I mean? Kyler Murray. He's so smart back there. But once that athleticism runs yeah. out, like once that athleticism runs out, now you can't see over the offensive line, but now you can't <coughs> move around right. to find the vacant window so you can get those passes off. I think that's what you see with Russell. Right. And I think eventually – Kyler Murray's had two injuries. He's not going to run 4-3 yeah. in the next three years. So, you'll see that tar- that start to take. And the uh, same thing. And then yeah. Baker Mayfield. Hey, Baker Jim, had to learn how to Jim Harbaugh's got himself another Ohio State Buckeye. Yeah, I saw team. that. J.K. Dobbins is going to sign with the L.A. Chargers. If that kid can stay <coughs> healthy, I don't know. Does he have two ACLs now? Yeah. I mean, I don't yeah. know. J.K. Dobbins is nice at uh, Ohio State. Uh, we'll, we'll see what it is. J.K. Dobbins was working out with Aaron Rodgers all off season, though. Remember that oh, uh, appearance right. on the McAfee show? R- remember when Aaron was already walking? Yeah. <laughs> J.K. was still. He's like, what are you doing? I'm still on the crutch. Right. Hey, oh, la- we'll last see. one for you NFL-wise, guys. Uh, Bray's favorite guy, Dak Prescott. <laughs> Dak. Uh, his Bum. accuser has dropped another, well, they've dropped oh, $100 million. Dollar, on that. The $100 million sexual assault charge oh. has been dropped. By Dak Prescott's accuser. And exactly. you got to give me something else in that. Can't end the week on that. I can't? No. How about Trevor Bauer? Off. Did you see Trevor Bauer? <laughs> he can't end the week on that either. You can't? Cannot end the uh, week on that. Well, you got to give me something else. I didn't know the woman else. was black. Yeah. What was that? Black. Oh, yeah. Let's go to the yeah. pro football focus. Uh, highest grades from 2022. Now, okay, this, you can end the week on that. This is going to. This is going to pop up in front of you. Sexual assault. Uh, Take a peek. It's going to pop up in front of you. I'm going to bring it up for you in the meantime while people are waiting. Yeah. Well, I'm on a little bit of a delay here, so it doesn't quite strike home, Maz. Thank you. I'm giving you the opportunity now to find it with me filling the space with a bunch of words. I got it. I killed time. Okay. Okay. Sauce Gardner's number one at 91.2. Oh, yeah. Kyle Hamilton, third at 90.7. He played good last year. Aiden Hutchinson, third at 90.6. Wow. Brock Purdy, 88.4. Olave, 86.8. Wow. Trent McDuffie, 85.7. I never heard of him, really. I'd have, but Kenneth Walker, 85.7. And Drake London, 84.8. That's the 2022 class, a minimum of 1,000 snaps. Unbelievable. So, Aiden Hutchinson, congratulations. And Aiden Hutchinson's on the billboard down That's here right. at the draft. Uh, Guys, we want to thank everybody for tuning in today, and we want to thank our friends from Shake Shack for having us out. An incredible experience to be down here. want to thank Megan 
Aaron, Andrew. Uh, this place is second to none when it comes to uh, just popping in, grabbing a quick bite downtown. It's beautiful. Maybe it's, a, it's huge. The, the setting here is second to yeah, none. This is amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I am looking right outside the window now. Two-door entry. Yeah. To the NFL Draft Theater. All right. If you look to your left, you'll be able to see the NFC North. Uh, I yeah, see it right the there. Teams. My goodness. See all those teams? Hey, come on out to Shake Shack. Yeah. Come on out to downtown Detroit. Check us out. Woodward Sports on YouTube. There we will is. see you. There it is. Have a nice weekend, week. everybody. Shake Shack. You, you smell that? That's Brad Holmes cooking. And the off-season smells good. Woodward Sports.